Folks, we have uh, one more counselor who is logging in. So give us another minute and we'll begin our meeting. Individual calling in. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this hopefully will give Jack some. All right, it looks like we have a full council this evening um, and folks are still logging in, but we'll get started with, um, with our meeting. So at this point, I will, in essence, reconvene to open session. Um, and I do want to alert uh, folks to, and I want to make sure I read this correctly, the fact that we pulled one of the items from the closed session. Um, the restraining order stipulated duration was observed and matter dismissed on January 20th, 2022. So the item is being dropped or was dropped from the agenda. Um, so just realize that the closed session agenda regarding a restraining order, city of Trinidad versus Mike Morgan was not discussed in closed session. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of that. At this point, we will stand for the pledge and <clears throat> say the pledge. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening for our February 8th uh, City Council meeting. And we have, um, let's see. Our first order of business is to uh, approve the agenda. And I just wanna give folks an update um, that later in the, in the discussion agenda items, item number six, um, we are gonna pull that from tonight's meeting. Uh, one of the candidates who submitted a letter who's in the packet um, is not able to attend tonight. And so for, um, Equal treatment of candidates, we will push that to our, and we're going to have a second meeting in uh, February. I believe it's the 27th, whatever the last Tuesday of the month is. Um, so please know that item number five, uh, sorry, six, uh, we will table that until our second meeting in February. So the 22nd. 22nd, thank you. 22nd. So um, at that, at this point, um, are there any changes being asked of the agenda from council? Jack? 
Jack, I don't know why we can't hear you. He's muted. Still muted. Did we still have to pull number five from the consent agenda for discussion during regular discussion? Okay, Dave, do you want to, uh, Jack, if you could log out and log back in so that we can try to hear you. Um, there think, has I been. Think, go ahead, oh, Sharon. I think we also wanted to pull item number four. Um, and uh, that may be what Jack's trying to say as well. Yes, number four and five, uh, there's been lots of public comment um, asking yes. to pull from the consent number four and number five and make them the first two items of the action agenda. Uh, sorry, discussion action agenda items. Yeah. Point of order, you mayor. Point of order, mayor. Would you please yes, read talking about instead of stating numbers because we can't tell we're on phone. So if you could read the mm -hmm. whole item that's listed, that would be a big help. We know what you're talking about. Will do. So the call has been to uh, pull from the consent agenda um, contract with Best Best Krieger for supplemental legal advice in connection to issues involving local Native American tribes and contract with Coleman Engineering to provide qualified and certified chief water treatment plant utility operations for the city of Trinidad. So both of those items um, I'm hearing that we... Um, wish to pull those from consent and cover them first and second in the discussion section. Any uh, other Steve? substantive changes to the agenda that are being requested? Steve, I just want to know if you hear me. Yes, Jack, so, you're with you. us. Back, back in again. Thanks for getting those two moved. You bet. Other, and I'm on two screens now. So again, if I could ask folks to use the raise hand feature if you're in the Zoom. Um, if you're calling in on phone, then just pick a time to, to blurt out. Um, any other substantive changes that we want, that folks want from the agenda? All right. Seeing uh, none, uh, if we can have a, a motion. I'll make a motion. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm blurting out. out. I'm blurting out. Sorry, point of order. So we missed it. You're, are you pulling the discussion decision regarding appointment to fill the city council vacancy through December 2022 and holding it over to a special meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Are you ready for a motion? I'm ready. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the revised agenda. And I'll, I'll second, second the motion. All right, we have a first and we have a second. Uh, Gabe, just for um, consistency, if we can do roll call votes for all the votes, that would be helpful. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Can I just uh, make sure everybody can hear me all right? You are coming through yeah. loud and clear. Okay, great. So we've got a motion by Council Member Grover, seconded by Kelly, to table Discussion item six regarding the council vacancy to the special meeting on February 22nd and to pull consent agenda items four and five, one of them for legal service, Best Best and Krieger, and the other for Coleman Engineering. And uh, with that, we'll go with a vote. Council member Grover? Hi. Kelly? Hi. West? Yes. And Ladwig? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And just a, um, a quick comment, uh, Ms. Hossler Carmison, from time to time, little noises pop out of your, uh, your screen. So thank you very much. Um, all right, so moving on, thank you for that discussion. And also just as a, as a general comment, thank you for the folks who, who expressed their interest in having those in public uh, those items that we pulled from consent into public, uh, very much appreciate that input. So at this point, we are now working on um, approval of minutes from both December 14th and, uh, sorry, from December 14th, November, uh, January 11th, and January 25th, the special meeting. Um, so at this point, let's do one at a time. If there are any Substantive changes being requested for the December 14th meeting minutes. All 
All right, seeing and hearing none. Moving on to the January 11th meeting minutes. Any substantive changes, additions, deletions? Again, seeing and hearing none. Moving on to the joint meeting of the Council Planning Commission and the STR Advisory Committee. Any substantive changes to the minutes from the from that meeting, from the January 25th um, group meeting. All right, again, hearing and seeing none. Uh, do we have a motion for the minutes from those three meetings? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes from all three meetings. Second that. All right, first from Grover, second from West. Uh, quick question, since I wasn't involved in the first two, do I need to abstain? from approving those? I believe okay. you do. I will do so, okay. Yes. Yeah, so we'll have the record set uh, straight that Ms. Kelly was uh, not participating in the uh, December, was it the January meeting as well? The uh, January 11th, I was not, but the not. late January one, I was. Okay, got it. Okay, so you'll be on record as an abstention from those two, but uh, with that, we'll say for the rest, we'll go with the vote. Uh, Council Member Grover? Aye. Uh, West? Yes. And Ladwig? Aye. Passes unanimously. Uh, minutes were approved as submitted. All right, thank you very much. And at this point, we'll move on to Council reports and committee assignments. Uh, Mr. Grover, I'll start with you. Um, I was able to attend the Redwood Coast Energy Authority meeting again. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe passing the torch. I might only have a couple months left here, uh, residents in Trinidad. Um, Mayor Ladwig did show some interest in that, so I'm looking forward to uh, maybe inviting him to the next meeting as the alternate and uh, getting his feet wet and that, seeing what they do there. Please do. Um, it's got, you know, it's really tying into a lot of the way we're going to get energy here in the future to a lot of it. A lot of solar rays are being set up and uh, we're really leading the nation in this kind of production. So any any knowledge we can obtain as a council um, would be very helpful. Uh, that's pretty much all I got to report. You probably get a lot more if you visit the site and start thinking about actually using them as an alternative to uh, PG&E because uh, they're more cutting edge and they're coming up with a lot better systems of rebates and stuff as people transition into having their own solar rays and you know their own production energy production and islanding and a lot a lot to do with uh, storage battery storage and stuff like that that's going to be what um, what's going to be happening here within the next decade so that's it for me. I think that's all I have to say that's relevant to this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Grover. Ms. Kelly, I know you're brand new, but I believe you attended a, a gateway meeting right, right around your appointment. I actually, um, I actually attended the California League of California Cities uh, training for new mayors and council members. And so I can give a report out on that. I did have an email exchange with the gateway committee. Uh, they're working on their strategic plan, so I can update in the next meeting on that. Uh, but just briefly, um, the Cal League of California Cities does training for council members, planning commissioners, city staff. And I attended a virtual con conference. It was January 20th, 21st, 27th, and 28th. So it was like three days of virtual meetings. Um, it was relatively inexpensive. It was about $250. I highly recommend it, especially for new uh, council members or planning commissioners. Um, they went over things like financial responsibility for the city, uh, Brown Act, um, how to develop effective city councils. They had a really good kind of mock city council meeting, which they called Dysfunction Junction. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, highly entertaining. Um, but what I, I just had, wrote down a few takeaways because it's, you know, four days of, of meeting. So I don't, I don't know. I'll spare you guys the details, but there's a lot of slides if anybody wants to see some of the content. But um, I guess I would say, first of all, rules and structure. I think the city of Trinidad were very self-critical sometimes. Um, and talking to the other city uh, folks, both staff and elected officials, and hearing some of the stories and some of the things they are challenged with, 
my takeaway was that um, the city of, uh, as a community and the city of Trinidad, I think we deserve a little bit of a pat on the back because I think we actually do follow uh, a lot of the rules and procedures. At least we try very hard to. And I want to thank the community for keeping us all honest in that way. So I was, um, that was one of my big takeaways was we're not, we're not doing so bad. Uh, comparatively speaking. Um, there was some good, um, there's a great slide that I got on budget priorities. I'm sure Eli has access to this information. And it was really interesting that the state will have a huge uh, budget for things like COVID and homelessness and zero emission vehicles, child care, clean energy, water infrastructure. And it hit a number of areas where I think the city of Trinidad uh, thanks to Becky, you know, can, can apply for some grants, and, and it really aligns with some of our priorities. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about social media and the fact that social media now is a way that um, a lot of elected officials are sort of accidentally violating the Brown Act by commenting on social media. And then even if other uh, members of a council, for example, like those uh, posts, if they just even hit like, that's considered an interaction. So that was kind of interesting. Um, we did, um, there were some good quotes about public debate. Um, as I said, I think we do a pretty good job as a community, but one of the, the takeaways was disagree without being disagreeable. And then also debate is the oxygen of democracy. And I thought that was a really good thing to remember. And then um, there were some good ideas about using town halls to go deep on topics and then and things like general plans, annual budgets, things like that. I think we could maybe do some more town halls, especially after COVID uh, clears. But like most conferences, it would have been great to talk to everybody in person and, you know, virtual is not quite as good, but, um, but I definitely thought it was worthwhile and I'd recommend it. So thank you. That's my two minute summary of the four day meeting. <laughs> If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much, Ms. Kelly. Um, and Mr. West. I, I've got two items to talk about. First um, uh, first thing is the last HCOG meeting. Uh, in the meeting, we reviewed the 2021 projects and accomplishments. And I was pretty impressed with what HCOG has been doing. They have uh, they worked on their regional transportation plan, which is called VROOM, V-R-O-O-M. And they'll be setting goals now for transportation for the next 20 years, from 2022 to 2042. They've got the regional bike plan, uh, the Eureka Corridor project, which is pretty fantastic. The Bay Trail, which looks like it's going to be put together pretty soon, and other local trails, including um, the Little River Trail, that they're uh, hopefully getting gets going pretty soon. They've also been setting aside monies for the various uh, local cities and the county. Uh, Fortunately, Trinidad gets the smallest amount of money because we're the smallest city, but um, we're still able to use it to keep our roads in pretty good shape. So that's good. Um, I'm gonna. I asked uh, the HCOG director uh, to Beth Burks to attend the March meeting to give us a brief idea of what HCOG has done and what they plan on doing and how it affects Trinidad. So hopefully, we'll get a short um, a short introduction to HCOG at the next meeting. I think that'd be nice. Um, we also have um, decided to get back to the, we're getting back to our trails meeting since um, uh, Councilman Davies has uh, retired from the council. Uh, I've taken off, off with Shell Kelly and we will be uh, meeting on the 15th at five o'clock next week. We have a nice agenda. We're hoping to start seeing if we can get some of these uh, trail issues taken care of. So we'll meet. Next week, with um, with hopefully some good ideas, and we'll come back next meeting with some um, some good information for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jack. Um, I was able to attend a Humboldt Transit Authority meeting uh, the last week, and um, there is a, a special City Council meeting with the City of Eureka uh, tomorrow night, and the topic um, will include plans to convert one of the local parking spaces in Eureka to an uh, intermodal transit center. And if anyone is interested in sort of the larger picture about transit in Humboldt County, um, a lot of, of money is going to come into the county for hydrogen fuel buses, for solar arrays to, to um, power buses. And this intermodal center is a big part of that to 
tie us to the entire North state. Um, in other words, through the modal center, you can work your way all the way down to the Bay area, Sacramento, um, on public transport. So for those looking to adjust their carbon footprint and jump into public transit, this is a, the very beginning stages and a very exciting time for, for transit in the area. And then, uh, Jack and Eli and I attended a meeting with the Pacific Watershed Associates and GHD to review our efforts towards our water. And I wanted to give a brief summary of that. Um, some of the efforts underway, is, as you'll see in the city manager's report, there's quite a bit of money coming in, um, or at least that we're applying for, rather, for water storage and fixing leaky pipes. Water storage, uh, the first thing you need for water storage is a suitable place to put it. Um, geologically speaking, access, affordability. And so efforts are underway right now to really pursue um, up to a million gallons of water storage, which would give us almost two weeks of, of water usage. Uh, so that is really exciting. Um, and some really exciting uses of the water storage to, in, in essence, to enhance the efficiency of the plant. So water being pulled from the creek during mild flows and then during heavy flows when the turbidity is high to turn off the, the direct line of silt filled water and use this water that's been stored that was nice and clean. So just some really exciting ways to increase the efficiency of the plant, increase the life of the plant increase our resiliency. So just wanted to give an update on that. And you can see again in the city manager's report, quite a bit of money being uh, sought after to build these tanks and to fix these leaks. So, um, and I believe soon, I, I think even tomorrow, there's a chance to go walk these properties and really start to put eyes on land for possible use. And so please look for uh, updates in the coming months about uh, possible properties and whatnot for the city to make decisions on. Um, so that's the, the update that I have from both HTA and from our city water efforts. Um, at this point, any questions from the general public on any of the reports given by the counselors? Just to make sure that we're, we're answering your questions. Paul, I see your hand is up. Yes, you briefly mentioned that you um, spoke to PWA. Are you going to be giving a report uh, on what you discussed with them? And uh, I specifically like an update on what they've accomplished. I believe I just there. gave a report on what that meeting was about, um, all the different water storage efforts and water resiliency efforts. That's That was with PWA and with GHD and with the uh, city manager. That's a little bit un unclear to me um, because we had um, applied for a grant um, for water storage apart from what uh, PWA theoretically, we're supposed to be doing. Um, are you saying that, that they have both been working together, um, PWA and GHD, on planning the storage? Right. So GHD is our city engineer who helps us with the plant the water plant, the, the filtration, the distribution of water. And PWA is, uh, is involved in, in essence, finding new ways to store, deliver, and whatnot, the water. So both entities are working simultaneously to work on our resiliency. Jack, I saw that your hand was up. Did you want to add something? I just wanted to add that um, PWA has, has been putting out a number of different types of maps, look at locations for storage. They've done a great deal of background work to try to get us prepared uh, for the potential of getting some kind of water storage. Uh, and we worked with them on understanding a little bit about how, where our water tank's gonna be. So we've learned a lot about the water tanks and we're waiting now. What we have to do is wait for uh, some kind of a grants in order to begin moving in the direction of getting these put in. But they're right now, I've given us a 
great deal of information to uh, at least get us an idea of what's out there and what we can do. It, it, really, it, look. How about this, Paula? Look for um, in the next month or two, uh, basically a list of properties that are suitable for, you know, uh, cost to develop geologic. They're not on a steep slope. They're not really super far away from the plant or from the storage. So that's what they're currently spending their effort on um, is to identify places where we can store suitable amounts of water, not 100,000 gallons, but we're talking large amounts of storage. Now, there was a, a senior gentleman at the last meeting who said that there was county-owned property near where our water plant is that might be available. Do you know if they've investigated that? That's all part of it, right? So uh, really, I think we might be a little premature to start talking specific parcels because they're going to assess they have, like Jack said, they have a large map, both the engineer that, that is handling our water distribution and filtration and PWA are really going to review of all the sites within the sphere of influence, right, within the watershed, where makes the most sense, you know, elevation, slope, all these different things that, that are being considered. Does that answer your question? Almost. I'd, I'd like to see something in writing at some point or the, the uh, maps and or the maps available. You will. Um, once we have a list of suitable properties, then it's up to the city to decide which ones do we pursue. There's going to be costs associated. There's permits. There's all sorts of, of things that the city would have to consider. Jack? If you would like to see a map, too, there is one in uh, the city manager's office that you would be you could ask him if it would be all right to come in and see it. Which office is this? City manager's office. City manager's office. office across. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, one more thing. We're on items not on the agenda. Nope. We are on uh, <laughs> well, council reports. Council, yes, I have something about the financial statement that was no, very Paula, confusing. Paula, this, this is the part where I asked if anyone had questions about any of the councillor reports. We'll move to, to the next item. Um, oh, the councillor, that's not a councillor report, that's nope. Eli's report. Yep. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments for the councillors on any of the reports that we gave? All right, seeing none, we will move on to staff reports. Eli. Yes, I will first see if Lieutenant Miller is on the line. I searched through, I didn't see him. But if he is maybe on the phone, uh, he can get started first. So I'll wait for, I'll pause for a few seconds here. Yeah, I don't see him either, Eli. There's only, um, yeah, I don't see him. Okay, well, very good. So I will proceed. Uh, so in the packet, there's the city manager staff report. As I had indicated, I went to the city manager's conference in Monterey and uh, unfortunately on my way uh, in Oakland, um, just briefly going in to grab a couple donuts, someone stole my uh, uh, laptop, which was in my, uh, uh, which was in, in the trunk. Uh, and as a result, I wasn't able to put together the uh, staff report uh, uh, by typing it, but I verbally dictated uh, parts of it and also dictated uh, an agenda item. And then I also want to thank uh, Becky Price Hall, who prepared the remainder of the uh, staff report, and she gave an update in there regarding our current stormwater improvement project, also regarding the two uh, water grants that you were referring to regard that uh, deal with uh, storage and uh, deal with fixing leaky pipes and also an emergency inner tie uh, with West Haven. Uh, so in addition to that, I have my monthly update from Verizon. So Verizon says that the uh, new tower that they are putting together in West Haven um, the in-service forecast for that tower, which will replace the Trinidad head site tower, has been pushed to the end of February. They say they are still working on fiber delivery to the site. 
Uh, and then we're also working with the uh, native community and have uh, representatives from uh, the uh, Trinidad Rancheria from the Yurok tribe and the Churai Ancestral Society that will help us in once the site is decommissioned uh, on Trinidad Head in turning that back to its natural setting. Um, also, we are part of the SB 1383 Cal recycle process. Uh, every city in the state is uh, uh, obligated to be involved in that new process, which is dealing with organics. That's what SB 1383 is. And uh, because of the size of our city, we have been able to obtain a waiver uh, for, uh, for the city complying with that. But in the meantime, it would be great if uh, residents uh, can uh, start looking into the suggested SB 1383 composting, uh, basically trying to get food waste um, including coffee grounds out of the waste stream and out of landfills because it ends up um, creating methane gas, which contributes to global warming. So uh, any kind of food waste, if it can be uh, composted, uh, that would be ideal. Uh, and then we're also working on a county level with Edgar and Associates. Uh, so this, our city, the other six cities in the county and the county uh, have contracted with Edgar and Associates. Uh, fortunately, because of our size, we're paying the least amount um, uh, for that. And, but uh, they will be preparing the proper protocol for us to follow to be in compliance with that Senate bill uh, at, and that act that was passed. In addition to that, the uh, governor has indicated that the mask mandate will be uh, lifted on February the 15th. Um, for vaccinated residents, for uh, most indoor public places. And, uh, and that's all I have. Uh, at a future meeting, I know we have quite a bit on the agenda, but uh, possibly, uh, we'll, we'll see it either in March or in April, I may give you a little bit of information, uh, possibly over several meetings uh, from the city manager's conference uh, they got quite involved into finances, uh, so that's something I would like to share, especially as we start heading towards the budget process. So I'll open it up now if there are any questions from the council or the public. I see one uh, hand up from Ms. hostler Carmison. Thank you, Mayor Ladwig. Um, <clears throat> uh, Eli, if you could please go over your comments regarding restoration of Trinidad Head, restoring, and um, I also am not aware of any invitation to Trinidad Rancheria to participate in that. So if you could clarify that, please. Sure. Um, Trevor Parker is uh, working on that, our city planner. And she's coordinating that effort with Verizon. And uh, so if you have not been contacted yet, you will be contacted shortly. Uh, and, uh, and, and then we are making sure that they are not going to be doing the decommissioning until uh, we can verify that the coverage from Verizon is hopefully equal to or better than what we currently have. Uh, but yes, I will talk with uh, Trevor Parker and, uh, and find out the timeline. And we'll get back to you, to the Yurok tribe and to the Chirai Ancestral Society and, and let them know uh, as far as, uh, you know, more details on that decommissioning. Thank you. I just, I just heard you say that they you would be working with the Yurok tribe and Chirai Ancestral Society on restoring it to its natural condition. So uh, that should also include Trinidad Rancheria. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, maybe it didn't come clear, but I actually said Trinidad Rancheria before I said the other two. Oh, I'm sorry, Eli. Okay. It, I, it, I did not hear it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Uh, any other questions? I see Mr. Grover's hand up. I just wanted to thank Eli for that report and uh, let anybody out there know that I have three different size and style composters here 
if somebody wants <laughs> to swing by Edward Street and get some ideas if they don't have one, because um, we've used it in the garden, and I, you know, I just come up with a lot of different stuff, and I have one for coffee ground, different acidities, and different things that you can do for different kinds of soil. So if anybody's interested in in getting going on that, uh, I'm available. Thank you very much. Ms. Levine, I saw your hand go back up. Yes, I found several items in the financial statement very confusing on page 16, um, which... And actually, we'll be doing the financial statement. That's part of the consent calendar, uh, consent agenda. So that'll be coming up in a few moments. I thought that was... Uh, It'll be after items from the floor. Yeah, my, my, my bad, Paula. I, I thought it was in the staff report. It's actually in the consent. Okay, let me know when I could I, uh, ask you a question about it. Thank I you. I will, for sure. Um. Any other questions for the city manager on staff report? Okay, at this point, we will uh, move on to items from the floor. At this time, members of the public may comment on items not appearing on the agenda. Individual comments will be limited to three minutes or less. Comments should be directed to the council as a whole and not individual council members or staff. Council and staff responses will be minimal for non-agenda items. At this point, do we have any items from the floor? Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Tyler James. I'm at 560 Edward Street. I just wanted to inform everybody that on February 6th, Mike Morgan and I filed a citizen's complaint form. Um, we have been locked out of the city hall against state of California CDPH guidance. We are both self-attested mask exempt people. I ask that you please follow the state guidance and stop this harassment at once. Thank you. Any other items from the floor? Yes, I have a, well, it's a question first. I'm not sure if I understood it right, but it, it seems that in December, you guys have to vote each month to keep doing these online and telephone meetings. Is that correct? Yes, when we call the meeting to order, the resolution is ongoing, uh, authorizing continued use of virtual meetings, resolution 2021-12, uh, authorizing continued use of virtual meetings. So it's a standing order uh, or process rather that is inherent in the opening of every meeting. So you, you voted to do this, everybody voted unanimously to do this still? Yes. Will it be continued next month, given the dropping of the COVID restrictions? We will make that assessment uh, when we have it on the agenda. Okay, sounds great. Um, I've already sent in this, but I'll just say it really quickly. Hopefully, I'm still within my three minutes. I love my freedom more than I'm scared of a germ. Do you? Honorable Councilman, the City of Trinidad Council and staff must stop trying to prop up their COVID nonsense with their call-in council meetings. City council meetings should be held in person publicly, openly, and in town hall. You must accommodate me and any other person who will not wear a face covering or get some experimental injection or take some fake test. You must know by now, because we all know now, only the complicit believe COVID lies anymore. Sincerely and with all due respect, Mike Morgan. Thank you. I see uh, Ashley Fleshner, your hand is up. Yes. Hello, um, I'm actually uh, Patty Fleshner's son. Some of you may know her, and I'm speaking on behalf of her as she has a real problem with internet connectivity at home. I wish to draw something to the councils and the citizens of Trinidad's attention. That is that there is a heavy amount of loitering going on in the vicinity of the library, in the museum and the park there at the front. Um, I, I believe Patty, I, or I saw an email she sent to Gabe um, for um, record today, but this has resulted in it, at least one person now today uh, quitting working at the library. There's a lot of verbal abuse and bottles and 
public urination um, occurring. And the museum, which is manned by a number of docents and volunteers and is very hard to keep you know, going also, um, we're having some challenges um, with regards to people verbally assaulting individuals as they come to visit these. Uh, very lovely, I think, <laughs> uh, facade to the front of Trinidad as you come in. Um, so I'm very concerned about it. I know my mother's very concerned about it. And I have heard of others in the community that are also concerned about it. Um, and I just wanted to bring it up and I will um, get off now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. And we will bring this up with Lieutenant Miller. Unfortunately, he usually attends these meetings and unfortunately he's not at this meeting. So we cannot um, bring that to his attention tonight. But Eli has a very close connection with Lieutenant Miller and can pass that along to him tomorrow morning. And just for your information, I, I have been in touch with Lieutenant Miller regarding that, uh, but I will get back in touch with him to make sure that he realizes that it's still an ongoing problem. Thank you so much. Other items from the floor? All right, uh, at this point then, we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, at this point, all matters on the consent agenda are considered routine by the city council and are enacted in one motion. There is no separate discussion for any of these items. If discussion is requested by a council member, that item is removed from the consent calendar considered separately. A single opportunity for public comment on the consent agenda is available to the public. So at this point, Ms. Levine, Public comment is allowed and uh, welcomed, at, rather, at this point for the consent agenda, of which the financial report is one of them. Okay. Um, this is about uh, the water. Um, 601, page 16, it says the net income for the current period is $73,656. On page 15, also 601 water, it says the net income is $27,812. And also the current year um, totals are completely different on both pages. So that, that's confusing. And uh, let's see what page is this. Number 75300 um, for contracted services, also contracted services for water. The current period is 37,915. And the question is, is that all engineering services, PWA and GHD? Um, but in, in looking through, all the financial statements, I found it, um, they contradict from page to page. So, and just so you know, um, we are limited if we're going to discuss this much. So I'm going to ask Eli to, to give a brief response. And then if we need to, we can pull it from the consent agenda and actually get into a discussion. Or you can, we'll see what Eli's recommendation is, but there also may be an opportunity to, to ask these specific questions of Eli on how the, the page is set up at a later time. So let's just hear from Eli. I just want to be respectful of the process. Um, Eli, can you respond to Paula's questions, comments? Yeah, the financial statements are prepared by our accounting firm. Um, I would have to ask them uh, what they have in each of those categories. Uh, meanwhile, we do have our city clerk, Gabe Adams, and our one of our administrative assistants, uh, Anton. Uh, so if either of them who are on the call are aware of what you're asking, maybe they could weigh in. Otherwise, I will contact the accounting firm and try to get a little more detail for you. All right, at this point, uh, Gabe or Anton, is there a way that you can answer generally? Um, or is this better for an open discussion, decision, action item? 
What's the what's your response, Gabe? Yeah, I, I'm happy to you know discuss this with Paula, um, you know, especially offline. It's or or just kind of give you a brief understanding right now if I can. I mean, the financial statements are created, like I said, by our like Eli mentioned by our CPA firm, and it it is a little misleading. I would I would steer you away from the net income line on the second page of the water fund um, because, like I, if you look up at the bottom of the water fund page under total expense, in the right hand <laughs> column, far right column, it says twenty eight point four three. That's the percent of the budget. Uh, that I understand is remaining, you know, it's not, um, you know, the most straightforward way to present the financial statements, but if you didn't know that that's the amount remaining left in the total budget, um, then of course, you know, you might, if you didn't drill down to the numbers, you might not recognize that, but, um, but yeah, Paula, if, if, uh, wanted to discuss this in further, I could show you this, um, you know, how the statement works at any time. Happy to do that after after the meeting. Okay, well, not after the meeting, but maybe uh, <laughs> later in the week. But oh yeah, anytime. He meant major... after like any time in the outside of the meeting. Yeah, outside okay. of the meeting. Okay, the major issue is that there's a contradiction in, right. in in the figures from one page to the other. It said, you know, verbally it says the same exact thing, and and the figures are different. It's just. Uh, Okay, we'll talk about it uh, another time, and I'll get and, back yeah, thank to you, the... Paula. The we usually devote an entire meeting to our financial statements and and our financial sort of goal setting and whatnot. So, um, I appreciate your interest in the details, and it is a heavy lift to, to understand this sort of spreadsheet kind of presentation. So, uh, at this point, do we have any other comments on the consent agenda? Again, pulling items four and five for discussion next. All right, seeing none, may I have a motion uh, regarding the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Oh, I got it. Okay. I, I move that we accept the consent agenda with, without, with number four and five being moved to discussion. I'll second that. First from Wes, second from Grover. Uh, Mr. Adams, do you mind doing a roll call? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. So uh, <laughs> Council Member West, uh, first, Grover, second, remove uh, consent agenda items number four and five for discussion. I'm guessing we'll take those probably first in order in the, yep. in the discussion. So we'll start with a vote. How about uh, Council Member West? Yes. Grover? Yes. Ladwig? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, folks, now it's time to move on to the discussion action agenda items. Um, we will take from the consent number four, approved contract with Coleman Engineering to provide qualified and certified chief water treatment plant utility operations for the city of Trinidad. Um, Eli, do you mind uh, covering this topic? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I will get started. We also have Russ Gans who could weigh in uh, regarding the either of these two contracts, four and five. Um, so the uh, water plant, we uh, are required to have a chief um, uh, operator of the plant, a CPO. And uh, we had lost our CPO which uh, was uh, Ryan, and uh, he went to another job in another field. And as a result, we had advertised um, several times uh, for uh, T3 and, uh, uh, and also T2 operators. We're a T3 plant. We're required to have the CPO as a T3 or a T4 or a T5, uh, but we can't have the operator as a T2. Uh, so out of our search, um, we also went ahead and contracted with Coleman Engineering to provide interim water um, plant operations while we were doing the search. Uh, we contacted a total of six or seven different firms and, uh, and, and received quotes from them. Um, so at least the ones that had someone available. Uh, some of those uh, were including uh, Jacobs Engineering, Coleman Engineering, 
pace engineering, um, and uh, water talent, and then our local sources, which are GHD, PWA, and SHN. Um, unfortunately, the local ones had nobody. Uh, GHD has people, have people in Arizona, but they don't have people in California uh, with the proper water licenses. So it boiled down to uh, Jacobs Engineering, but unfortunately, they were not in a current position to provide the service to us. Um, and then, uh, and, and part of the reason why I had reached out to Jacobs Engineering is because I knew that they were handling the uh, wastewater plant in uh, Crescent City, and they're handling both the water and wastewater in Brookings. So I was hoping that they would be able to handle it in the interim for us. Um, after that, uh, I was able to contact Water Talent. They're out of uh, Southern California. They had one person available, but would not be available for at least two weeks. And uh, they were out of Arizona. Um, and then Coleman Engineering had an individual available immediately, and they were out of Roseville, which is in Northern California. So as a result, uh, we had them tour the plant. We also had Jacobs tour the plant. Uh, and then I had uh, extensive discussions with Water Talent. Um, and of course, I talked to all three of our uh, engineering firms that we deal with. So ultimately, Coleman uh, received the contract to do the interim uh, of the plant. And, um, and we went through the hiring process to see if we could find people. We were able to find one T3 and one T2. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, we found a couple T1s, but they don't qualify for uh, being able to help run the plant. Uh, so the... Uh, Unfortunately, the, the, the only one that could have worked for us as an employee uh, chose not to be the chief uh, uh, plant operator uh, and uh, did not want to be the chief plant operator. So uh, she is currently working on the distribution system in the city. And what we did is uh, we had to go with Coleman Engineering. Otherwise, we could have gone with Water Talent, but we would have had to wait and get the person from Arizona. Uh, so Coleman has been providing uh, for November. The, they started it towards the end of October. So November, December, and January. And then in January, uh, we had uh, a meeting with them, and uh, we talked about having a contract where uh, they could be um, the plant operator, again, for the short term while they're searching and be training people. So this is the contract that's on the table right now. They started uh, training people uh, two weeks ago. So they, they are training a T2 currently, and they're going to be bringing on a T3 to train. Um, the contract is designed that it will uh, disappear uh, you know, as soon as possible um, as uh, once we get uh, our employees, you know, get... Uh, the people that they train will uh, eventually become our employees and then we'll do away with this contract. The only other relationship we would want to do in the future is to have either Coleman Engineering or a firm similar to them that specializes in water plants and water distribution be a uh, contracted resource to us so that our people can always contact them to get advice. Um, the person that's currently has been uh, working for our plant as a chief plant operator, uh, Phil Godman, uh, he's a T3, and he's worked over 20 years in a variety of water plants. So he has extensive experience. And uh, so that's number one. Number two, it's extremely important, uh, a highest priority for the city since we do have the water system to provide quality water to our residents and water customers, because we provide water to customers uh, that are also outside of the city limits. But either way, whether it's the residents, the commercial businesses uh, in the city or outside the city limits, a number one priority is to provide quality, safe, reliable water. 
So that's part of the reason why we did contract with a third party. And then the second reason is because the state, the state, um, state water resources control board oversees the various plants throughout the state. And they are looking at us and looking at other uh, cities and other districts to uh, make sure that we have proper people in place. So we've been in touch with the state, talking to them even before Ryan left. And then subsequently, they've had some concerns when we were doing our transition and they have a comfort level with Coleman Engineering. And as a result, uh, they are satisfied uh, with the plant operations currently. We're also doing what's called best practices. So we're looking at the way things were done previously, the way things are done now between the water plant, the distribution system, and we're looking to make some improvements with suggestions uh, from uh, both uh, Coleman Engineering and GHD. Um, so that's basically, in a nutshell, uh, I'll uh, turn it over to Russ so he could weigh in a little bit on the uh, contract process, and then we can open it up to the council and public. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, the city manager prior to tonight's meeting, he mentioned that there'd been some concern raised about the method for procurement for these services and in particular, whether a competitive bidding protocol was followed. There's actually uh, two potential exemptions, two exemptions that apply in this circumstance to the public bidding requirements under the California Government Code. Uh, and you'll see this agreement scoped as one for professional services. There's an express exemption from competitive bid-based uh, 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 procurement for professional services. Professional services are uh, retained by public entities like the city of Trinidad on a qualification-based selection criteria. Also, these services would constitute special services under the government code in that they're very specified, specific service being provided by an engineer with appropriate licensure and certification to operate uh, water treatment plants, which is... Um, very specialized uh, area in California and other jurisdictions. Uh, so with that, that, in essence, is a summation on the propriety of the procurement. Thank you very much, uh, both Russ and Eli. So at this point, any questions from the council uh, regarding this, um, uh, uh, this item? Go ahead, Cheryl. I just have a quick question, Eli, um, just to compare costs. Um, I know that um, you pointed out very well that this contract uh, can be essentially terminated once we find staff, so it's essentially a stopgap. So, um, but just comparing the, say, 400000 or so, if we did do this for a year, what are the typical staff and associated costs? I looked at the budget, it appeared it was about 200000 so... Does that sound about right to you, the normal, just to compare the two? Yeah, ballpark. I mean, uh, we do have, uh, you know, a situation now where we're hiring, uh, you know, a firm to uh, operate it temporarily. So the cost is much greater when you're doing something on a temporary basis. And when I got quotes from Jacobs Engineering and Water Talent uh, and Coleman Engineering, uh, because they were the three that uh, at least had people and had the numbers that they could give me. Uh, they were all pretty close uh, in uh, cost. Uh, okay. So it, it, it's, yeah, it was quite, con you know, it was much higher than we would want to or be able to pay, uh, you know, over a long period of time. Uh, but uh, in the short term, in order to make sure that the services continued uh, functioning properly, we, we had to resort to one of these uh, firms. Yeah, it sounds like kind of an emergency situation. So, mm. and, and I guess a quick follow-up question would be, um, is, there, um, is there an opportunity down the road for, um, you know, as we find new staff, um, so we can, we can obviously terminate the agreement, can we also um, look at is there a different in management? So I got the question from a few folks about um, how we currently manage the water plants and whether or not the, the management structure 
uh, hierarchy at the water plant. Is that correct? So the tier, you know, T3 versus T1s, T2s, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the uh, chief plant operator <clears throat> is required to be a T3 or greater, T4, okay. T5. Um, <clears throat> the state determines that. Um, they, uh, in our conversation with the state, they indicated that in their scoring for the plant, that if you're at 39 points or higher, you need to be a T3 plant. Uh, we're at 46, so therefore we're a T3 plant, and it's required that we have a T3, T4, T5 as the lead operator. Otherwise, uh, assisting them could be T2s, so it could be one or two T2s. Okay. All right. Thanks. And I, you know, then I remembered what I was really going to ask was I also got a question about will these costs be passed to the um, to the the citizens, the folks, the water users, right? So the extra cost, the delta between what we normally pay and what we'll pay with the contract. How how do we how do we manage that? Yeah, uh, we, yeah. We're, we're we're due to do a, a water rate study uh, that. Water rate study will be done this year. Um, we can then, uh, you know, adjust rates after the water rate study is done. Um, we're hoping to be able to sort of stabilize what we think our costs are going to be. Uh, so, uh, you know, even if we start the water rate study, uh, we're going to be focused more on whatever these temporary costs are being phased out and our permanent costs with the new people would be phased in. But we will have a water rate study this year, and part of that cost will be passed on to the consumer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the time. Uh, other questions for Eli from the council before I open it up to the general public? Nope. Uh, let's, I saw two heads shaking. So at this point, um, any questions from the general public on our contract with Coleman Engineering? This is Mike Morgan. I have uh, just a clarification. <clears throat> I haven't looked at this very much. I noticed there were a couple letters from the public, and I wondered if you'd read those in on this matter. Um, if you can find those while I'm talking, it'd be great. The I looked at Exhibit A, the city responsibilities and tasks not included, and the schedule and all the fees and all that. And what, what are we getting for this $35,000 a month? Just the fact that they have a license and we don't at the right P or T level, whichever you guys are talking about, it's uh, scary, I guess. And thinking that um, I'm not comforted by Russ, excuse me, attorney Russ Gann saying that we didn't do a competitive bid because it's uh, considered a professional service. That's, that's just silly. Um, I don't know what we've done with this, but I'll look more into it. And I'll probably have a few questions that I'll handle offline. All right. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead, Bryce. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Mayor and everyone. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's the price tag that's got everybody freaked out about this, this, uh, this measure. Even if it, you know, if, if you get started on this, you got to give them 30 days notice to cancel. So that's two months at least. $35,000 a month. You know, as I understand it, Ryan was performing this function himself until he left and he got his training here locally at, I think you can get it at College of the Redwoods. And I'm pretty sure that the state used to let us um, continue using an operator as long as we had somebody who was getting the training for the higher ranking and would, you know, get the license within a reasonable time. I just can't believe that. I, I know Ryan didn't make maybe what, 5,000 a month or something? And to go from 5,000 to 35,000 a month, it just seems unbelievable. Um, there's got to be a better way to, to handle this. I mean, and then just saying, well, we'll just pass it on to the rate payers. I mean, that scares me even worse. The rates would have to be quadrupled or something. So I don't know, maybe my three minutes is up, but I hope you guys are really thinking about this and, uh, don't don't just rush into a contract that's going to bankrupt the water department or something similar. So, 
I, I'd like to just sort of maybe respond to your concerns. Um, one is the, the cost of this contract is not going to be passed on to the consumer. Uh, so the water rate study is going to be conducted to figure out what does the plant and its operation under normal conditions with, uh, you know, being fully staffed, not through the consulting firm, what does it cost to distribute the water to ensure that we have replacement uh, funds available when filters need uh, replacing and things like that. So the, I can guarantee that the cost of this, uh, this short-term effect is not going to be passed on to the consumer that the number of uh, T3 certified folks in the county is not um, adequate to meet the needs of the plant, right? There's not a lot of people uh, in the county who are certified in the first place who are also <laughs> not already working in the water plant somewhere else, the water industry, treatment industry somewhere else. So um, after weeks and weeks of trying to advertise and call people and ask city managers if they had any part-time from other municipalities, folks who would willing to, to work for us, uh, none, none rose to the occasion. And so uh, as in response to the state water board's assertion that we cannot operate without adequate licensed individuals, we had to pursue this, this, uh, this firm. So yes, it's a hard pill to swallow. And I guarantee that the fines for not having licensed uh, T3 operators from the state is going to be much more significant than what we're paying for this. So hopefully that answers your question in a, in an authentic way. Paul, I see your hand is up. Uh, it sounds like the town is between a rock and a hard place, so to speak, and we can't go back. But if we could, um, if if Ryan was given some notice, and I assume he's still in the business of, of monitoring a water plant, nope. I would have tried to negotiate uh, giving him a substantial raise. <laughs> but... Uh, and we, and we, we have tried to entice uh, Ryan to come back. And, you know, you have to respect an individual's wish to, to change uh, their professional trajectory. So Ryan is not uh, interested in working for the city. Okay, well, you try. And he's not, and he's not working in, in water either. He's not. Okay, he's no. changed. He, different, different path altogether. Okay, I, I, I didn't know. Okay, thank you. We tried donuts and we tried all kinds of things. Other questions, comments from, I see Dave Hankins camera came on. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, just a, a quick comment because it seems as if this is the appropriate time to make it. Um, I'm watching you know, the water operation over the years in the city of Trinidad, I've been struck by how they're really has not been the equivalent of what we have in the West Haven Community Services District, which is a general manager. You know, like you've been using the term chief operator. Well, that's 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 very much a uh, sort of employment label and something that the state requires, but it doesn't give a good indication of what the actual responsibilities are. And I would just urge you, you know, while you're still, you know, trying to seek um, someone to be your lead operator, uh, that you ought to um, consider thinking of the position as something that provides broader direction to your water system for the future. Like with, with the West Haven District, right, we, uh, you know, we basically have someone who used to work for your system, you know, Paul Rosenblatt, who's been terrific. He's a, a visionary. He thinks ahead for the future, you know, where he thinks our community needs to be with respect to water. And he goes out and he finds grant money for us. And it's just such a neat thing. It puts the board, you know, our board, uh, analogous to, you know, the city council in the position of responding to suggestions that come from the individual who is responsible for managing the water system. And anyway, I, I, I didn't know when would be the most appropriate, you know, time to say something like this, but I think it's now, you know, like, because, it, you know, either you create that kind of position and think it through now, or it never happens. In other words, instead of having someone who basically just works for you, 
and is in charge of operating the treatment plant, you know, the, the lead responsibility for that. Instead, you think you want to hire someone who's responsible for thinking through the future of your water system and, uh, you know, trying to provide adequate supply and adequate quality of water, you know, for the duration. And it's, it's, a, it's a very different kind of position in terms of how the responsibilities are advertised. And a final note is I was struck, you know, attending a lot of Trinidad meetings having to do with water. Almost never was there a word spoken from the pers people that operate your water system. And I think there's something wrong with that. I mean, like, you know, ideas, often really good ones, come from the people that are actually in charge of operating these systems and making things run. Um, anyway, that, that, was, that was the only comment that I wanted to make. But I, I understand, by the way, the, the need to um, hire an interim engineer. Like, this, that's state and post. You have to have a T3 person to operate your system and to certify, you know, the various things that have to be sent to the state. Um, that's just the way it is. And that may have changed price, you know, from what it, the way that it once was. Thank you, Mr. Hankin. Yes. Other comments from the general public? Just a tiny one. Tiny one. Go ahead, Paula. You're on mute, Paula. I actually spoke to Ryan before he quit several times, and I asked him why he didn't uh, speak to the council or publicly about how he felt the uh, water system should be improved. And he very clearly wanted to hook up to Humboldt Bay Municipal Water District and very clearly said that the council knew what he thought and knew what his opinions were. And you find that with a lot of employees that they don't want to speak publicly or to their bosses. That's all. All right. Other comments about this agenda item? All right, bringing it back to the council then, um, we have heard comments about the contract with Coleman Engineering to provide quality, sorry, qualified certified chief water treatment plant utility operations for the city of Trinidad. Do we have um, a motion regarding this agenda item? I will move that we approve contract with Coleman Engineering to provide qualified and certified chief water treatment plant utility operators for the city of Trinidad. Second that. All right, we have a first and then we have a second. Uh, Mr. Adams, can you do a roll call, <laughs> roll call vote, please? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have a first by Council Member West and a second by Grover to approve the contract as submitted in the meeting packet. Uh, we'll go with uh, Council Member West. Yes. Grover. Yes. Kelly. Aye. Mayor Ladwig. Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And thank you for that discussion and for your comments, folks. Um, this is not a situation that we want to be in. Um, and this is uh, an attempt to get us back on solid ground. Sorry, not back on solid ground, onto new solid ground. So definitely heard your comments about the sort of the future direction of the water plant. At this point, we will move to item uh, from the consent, approved contract with Best Best Krieger for supplemental legal advice in connection to issues involving local Native American tribes. Uh, we have both uh, city manager and our city attorney to weigh in on this um, item. So Eli or Russ, I'm not sure who wishes to yeah. start. I, I will turn it over to Russ because uh, he is our legal counsel and, uh, and uh, th this is a firm that works with him. So I'll turn it over to Russ. Uh, thank you. And, and on behalf of council, uh, what we're seeking to do in this circumstance is to have on retention a law firm that specializes in uh, matters of Indian law, trust land dedications, uh, tribal governance issues, uh, basically on a retention basis. So they don't have an active role for the uh, city. Uh, we will only consult with them on a limited basis as um, issues 
uh, arise. Anyway, so this firm uh, that is now affiliated with Best Best and Krieger, they specialize in Indian law matters. That is the sole uh, substance of their practice. And, you know, it's akin to, you know, uh, uh, consulting with a doctor that specializes in some area of medicine. So anyway, we, we wanted to have somebody on board that uh, we, on behalf of the city attorney, can consult with on occasion in the city as well as uh, issues related to Indian law develop from time to time. But again, they don't have any ongoing role or active role with the city, but they will be available to answer uh, Indian law inquiries if and when those arise. Thank you very much, Russ. So um, again, this is a, a request to, in essence, add to our legal resources. Um, and at this point, I'll open it up to the council for questions for either Eli or Russ on this item. Mr. West? I, I just would like to ask if, um, if we uh, aren't, if we owe them any money if we don't use them. No, they work on an hourly basis, so they have to be assigned a project before we incur a debt or liability. Thank you. Other questions from our council? Um, more of a comment, just that um, the review, you know, because a lot of the comments were like, you know, we're spending because of what we just found out with the water and stuff. It seems like the city's hemorrhaging money here, but I just wanted to assure people that um, there was a specialty Thing here is the only reason that they're asking for their advice because they they have a special talent in something specifically that we've been struggling with with the city with um the tribal entities around it for a long time so we're just we're trying to do it as quickly as efficiently as possible because that's ultimately going to save money thank you for that comment Ms. Kelly, anything just as I'm going around the Robin here? Okay. At this point, I'd like to op oh, open it up for public comment or questions. This is Mike Morgan. I guess I'll go. I can't see if anybody else is going to go, so I apologize for jumping in. Go uh, ahead. I just have a question for the attorney. What's the fee structure if we do use them? Do they have like a, do you get a cut of it or do we just build them separately as a separate business? They'll have their own invoice. What's what happens with that? Yeah, certainly I can answer that question. So no, they will be separate, separately retained by the city. So they will independently build the city for their time and their services. Uh, our office will have no involvement uh, with their invoicing or any, um, uh, payment, there's no fees uh, sharing structure, anything of that nature. Thank you. And then if you are gonna use them, then we would have the council approval to use them. You do go to the council first, right? Well, that's the concept. So on occasion, limited issues related to Indian law may develop. We will have this firm available that the city can consult with them. Staff can consult with them, for example, uh, the city planner can consult with them on issues on occasion that may develop. So they will be a professional service available to the city on a retention basis. But again, a uh, very limited consult basis uh, that they'll be consulted. All right. And in that, uh, in that vein, just to let folks know, when we have our closed session meetings um, following the Brown Act and following the the sort of the limitations for what you can and can cover in open and closed session, our legal um, discussions are most often, our legal counsel rather is most often asking direction from the council, which direction to go, what to do, what to pursue and whatnot. So that's, that's in essence um, baked into this process is that any involvement with legal activities is run through the council. Just want to let the folks know that that's what these closed sessions are for. Uh, other questions, comments from the general public? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to council for 
action uh, regarding contract with Best Best Krieger for supplemental legal advice. Do we need to make a motion? I'm asking for a motion regarding uh, this agenda item. I'm not supposed to tell you what I'm not asking. I'm not saying, no. please give me an approval motion or something like that. No, I understand. Sorry. I just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just want to make sure I was following. So I, I can uh, make a motion uh, to go ahead and um, approve uh, moving forward with Best Best and Krieger for supplemental legal advice in connections with issues involving the local Native American uh, tribal entities. I'll second that. All right, we have a first from Council Member Kelly, a second from Council Member West. Mr. Adams, would you please? Yes, as uh, Council Member Kelly reported in detail, uh, we have a motion on the table for uh, Ms. Kelly and uh, seconded by West to approve the contract as submitted in the uh, consent ag agenda and included in the packet. Uh, we'll start with uh, Council Member Kelly. Aye. West. Yes. Grover. Aye. And Ladwig. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. I uh, think I'm, we're moving on now to our first item uh, that is listed in the agenda, our third now, um, Resolution 2022-03, recognizing the public service of Tom Davies. And I am trying to find what page on the agenda. If someone has it up, that would be great. I want to read it. 71. Thank you. Um, not, let's see, I'm not seeing that on 71. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Mine has 66, so I'm not sure what yeah. I'm looking at. All right, so. This is, uh, again, Resolution 2022-03, Acknowledging the Public Service of Tom Davies. I'm going to read the um, Acknowledgement of Service, and then we'll open it up for comment. Um, so, whereas Tom Davies has served as count Trinidad City Council member from 2011 through 2014, and again from January 2019 through December 2021, Whereas Davies served as the City of Trinidad's Trails Advisory Committee chairperson, keeping the council and community, community engaged in policies and priorities involving one of the city's biggest recreational assets. And whereas Davies attended countless meetings, budget brainstorms, challenging closed sessions, and participated thoughtfully well studied with careful consideration, always adding balance. And whereas Davies was a champion for open government kept a close eye on process and fairness, and spoke his mind honestly and respectfully. And whereas Davies shared a common vision that has and continues to attract residents and visitors alike to Trinidad for preserving the community design and character that makes this coastal town unique, and now therefore be resolved that the city of Trinidad congratulates and thanks Tom Davies for his years of wholehearted and dedicated service to the citizens of Trinidad and to the future well-being of the community. So that is our uh, resolution. And at this point, I want to open it up for public comment regarding this resolution. Go ahead, Mr. Klompas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted to mention that uh, it was a pleasure working with uh, Mr. Davies. He had a different point of view often challenging uh, grants uh, and different aspects of the city wanting to, to always preserve its quaintness. And I did appreciate uh, Tom's point of view and also his participation and the, uh, the acknowledgement is well-deserved and thank you. Thank you, Richard. And I have to say that the islands off of Virginia look surprisingly similar to the islands off of uh, Trinidad. I'm not sure how that works. Must be you just must be attracted to islands that look like that. It's persistent memory. There we go. <laughs> Other comments from the from the community or from the council? 
Um, I just want to concur with everything you read too. Um, he did. He did keep a real eye on the ball too. He was very good at the finances. He pick up some stuff that you know he really had to dig in deep to find. So I, I appreciated that, and um, you know there was no doubt his intention is was the best for you know concerned that continued to be at the place it is. Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. West. I I concur. I said I was really sorry to see Tom leave the council. I think it's been a really strong voice for working and controlling projects that we might have not been as concerned about. So he brought in an interesting viewpoint. Um, many times he had me look at things in a different way, so I really appreciated that. And I kind of challenged the community to, to look carefully around our city and see if he can find somebody who may wish to come on the council with some of his points of view so he, we can keep him at least somewhat close because he did a good job. So thanks, Tom. He did a great job. You know, I, uh, I I really appreciate the fact that Cheryl recently attended a sort of a, you know, this training, right? And what it does is it, it sets a new, puts a new set of eyes on what we do. And, and her opening comments about um, how Trinidad really sticks to process and, and really embraces the open government, um, th that's Tom. Uh, that's a major par part of what he contributed to this city during his time on the council. Recently, I can only assume he did it during his first stint. Um, so I too, uh, I appreciate seeing him around town because he, he has that I've retired smile to him. And I think he also um, has that um, you know, some good stuff happened while I was on the council. So I appreciate his, uh, his contribution. Other comments from folks. I'm sorry. He's not here to, to be embarrassed by all of our, our comments, but, um, any other comments that folks would like to share? All right. Seeing none. Um, <clears throat> we do need a motion to approve our resolution 2022 Dash 03, I make said motion uh, that we approve this resolution. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry, Gabe, I wanted to save you from one. I think it's fairly uh, fairly easy to assume that's unanimous. So thank you very much, folks. At this point, we will move on to our next item, which is discussion decision regarding proposed Trinidad head trail sign. So we have members of the trails committee. We also have Eli to um, introduce sort of this, uh, not sort of introduce this uh, item. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, trails committee uh, had suggested that we um, replace the existing Trinidad head sign uh, since it's become worn. <clears throat> Uh, so the process was started a little while ago, and as a result, uh, we even had this on our agenda, I believe somewhere around um, late summer, early fall. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, my throat may be raspy, so. So as a result, uh, after that particular council meeting, um, we found that we still had some uh, input uh, that uh, was requested that we include and give an opportunity to uh, weigh in on. So specifically the Trinidad Rancheria. So subsequently the Trinidad Rancheria did provide us with their input uh, and they suggested two further changes to that proposed sign, changing the uh, Churai Trail to Churawa Trail, which is the name of Trinidad Ed uh, Churawa and to reference the Yurok name for Trinidad Head. So that's uh, the Churua. And the second thing was to refer to Churai people uh, as Yurok people. Um, I subsequently, after that input, uh, passed that information onto the Churai Ancestral Society and the Yurok tribe and set up a meeting with them to go over the suggested changes by the Trinidad Rancheria. Uh, at that meeting, the representatives um, of both the Yurok tribe and the Churai Ancestral Society uh, felt that the name of the trail should be Churai Trail, since historically 
that was the name used for the trail. Uh, therefore, it could be referred as Chirai Trail. And, and as I mentioned, as well as Chirai Trail on Chirawa. So, um, so I, I think it, it's probably both, you know, both would be good because I think having the fact that it is called Chirawa would be uh, relevant and uh, useful uh, for the public, the general public. Um, most of our native community would be mo quite aware of some of these terms, but uh, visitors uh, from other areas uh, in the U.S. and from other areas around the world that visit Trinidad, uh, I think it would be helpful for them to know this historical context. Uh, secondly, the prior reference to Churai people uh, has been changed to Yurok people as well as people of the Chirai village. So, so those two modifications were made, which would be receptive, I believe, to uh, the input from the Trinidad Rancheria. Uh, additionally, the following statement appears at the bottom of the sign, and that is uh, saying Chirai is a unique Yurok village because the people here speak the most linguistically divergent Yurok dialect. Um, and then attached is a, a picture of what the sign would look like uh, with the input from uh, everyone, uh, the Trinidad Rancheria, the Trinidad, uh, the Churai Ancestral Society, and the Yurok tribe, uh, as well as the uh, Trinidad Land Trust and the uh, uh, Trinidad uh, Trails Committee. And uh, so staff suggests that the council discuss and approve the sign to replace the existing warrant sign. Uh, I will also mention that uh, Carol Vandermeer, uh, I believe is on the line. And uh, since she was uh, helpful in, in this process, uh, you know, she can make some comments. And otherwise I believe, I know there's uh, representatives from the Trinidad uh, Ranchery and I believe from the ancestral, Chirai Ancestral Society and possibly the Yurok tribe, so uh, they could all weigh in. But I'll turn it over to Carol if she has any words to add. Eli, I don't see Carol's name. Okay, on the... so maybe she's not on now. Okay, yeah. I saw her name before, and I told her that the meeting, that we should get to this agenda item around 6.30, so considering it's <laughs> 7.30. So, so anyway, uh, I'll uh, turn it over to the council uh, and then to the public. Any questions for Eli um, from the council regarding this item? I'm seeing heads shaking, so we'll open it up to the public for public comment on this item. Hi, Ms. Michael I have a comment when you're ready. I'll, I'll get to you next, Mike. Thank you. Go ahead, Jackie. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on behalf of Trinidad Rancheria Tribal Council and uh, also our Vice Chairman Robert Hempstead is also on the video, on the Zoom call. Um, the Rancheria does, uh, Council would like to express their thanks for the extended consultation and uh, continuing the dialogue. And uh, Tribal Council is very happy to see the um, references from Chure people to Yurok people. That, that was very um, positive. Uh, they are uh, do not support the change uh, to the Chure Trail. They prefer Churewa Trail. Um, however, our uh, Tribal Historic Preservation Officer was not able to be on the call tonight to explain that further. So uh, at this time, just noted that there's appreciation for the consultation and the change that was made to Yurok people. However, there is disagreement with changing it to the Chure Trail. Um, it, our TIPO believed that Churewa Trail was uh, indeed more accurate and uh, is not aware of the historical reference. 
to the Chure Trail. And that's for the record, it's not opposing the decision tonight. Thank you, Ms. Foster Connison. Other uh, comments from the public? Uh, Mike, you had your, um, you had an interest in making a comment. Thank you, I do. Um, I appreciate the sensitivity around this and um, sounds like you guys did a lot of work. Um, I appreciate hearing Jackie's voice. I don't know why we don't have a, a member from the QRA speaking. They love to speak about this stuff. I'm a bit concerned. Um, it's calling it the Churai Trail and then throwing in here about the village of Churai is a bit confusing. We know where the village is. It's not on the head on all the maps and stuff. It's down below John Frame's house. So it's a little confusing that we've now kind of enlarged the village of Churai to be something that historically I don't think it's been. And I could be wrong. I'm glancing out to see the offshore rocks dotting the coastline are part of the Chure village. Is that true? I don't think so. I think the village is on a map. We have this part of the 12 and a half acres. It's a historical area and it's not on rocks out there. So, you know, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm voicing my knowledge and experience and I think it's misleading. Um, I don't, did we call it the Lighthouse Trail before? I'm not sure what it was called before, but this using Yurok Village of Churai to imply the city of Trinidad or the head is misleading, and it's not going to be helpful for any tourists that are visiting. The village of Churai is not up on the head it's over there. That's it. Other comments from the general public? All right, seeing or hearing none, we'll bring it back to council for discussion and possible motion. Jack? Okay, I uh, certainly want to compliment Carol on the job. I don't know how much of this she did, but I know she was a, a major part of what of putting this together. So this is, uh, and I'm, I appreciate that we seem to have come to very close to a full agreement and uh, thank Jackie for letting us keep this the way it is and, uh, and maybe we can find a way to um, add some information in other ways later, but that's a beautiful sign and I'm very impressed with it. So I wanna thank everybody for getting this together. Yeah, I totally agree. And we first looked at the concepts, I think like a year and a half ago in the trail committee and it's come a long way and it's great to see the collaboration. So it looks really good. Yes, I'm encouraged by the by the discourse this evening. Um, and uh, David, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I just concur with what was said. Okay. At this point, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, regarding this agenda item. I will move that we uh, um, we accept this Trinidad uh, head trail song. And I'll stuck in that motion. First from West, second from Grover. Um, Mr. Adams, if you please. <laughs> oh, sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have a motion by Councilmember West, seconded by Grover to accept the proposed latest version of the Trinidad Head trail sign as included in the meeting packet tonight. Uh, we'll start with a vote uh, by Councilmember West. Yes. Grover. Yes. Ladwig. Yes. And Kelly. Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. And again, for the for the concerted effort to um, seek everybody's input. So thank you much. I look forward to seeing the sign up on the head. Uh, the next item is a continued discussion decision regarding short-term rental ordinance revisions. As I am an owner of a short-term rental, I'm going to recuse myself and ask Mayor Pro Tem West to take over. Thank you, Mayor Ladwick. Um, yeah, we're going to be looking at our short-term rental ordinance that, that's already been presented. We've got uh, uh, two speakers I know that are ready to talk about. It. I believe uh, City Manager. Uh, Eli Napa and Trevor Parker will be talking about it. So um, who wants to start? Uh, I, 
<clears throat> excuse me, I'll, I'll start briefly and turn it over to Trevor. Uh, she prepared the agenda item and because uh, she's our city planner, she worked closely with the planning commission since uh, it was the task of the planning commission to come up with the revision to the STR ordinance. Um, this is a little bit later than probably it should have been uh, based upon the original ordinance. Uh, however, it did allow us the benefit of time where we were able to see and try to live through uh, some of the impacts of the ordinance on our community. Uh, fortunately, as we heard at our STR joint meeting in January with the Planning Commission and the City Council, um, the report is that uh, for the last couple years, um, we have had minimal complaints and uh, and as a result, it seems that the ordinance is working fairly well. Uh, throughout the state, uh, STRs uh, have had much more problems and unfortunately uh, we're able to get it under control. Um, previous to my starting in 2019, I believe the number of STRs in the city were in the high 30s. Uh, since I've been here since 2019, uh, they've been somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to uh, th around, around 31 for the most part. Uh, recently, it's dropped closer to 28. I did want to note that uh, the uh, ordinance here has a uh, cap, which we haven't had a cap before. So anyway, I'll turn it over to Trevor. I'll let, let her go into detail. And, uh, and then if there's any questions, uh, she can and I can help answer them. So I'll turn it to Trevor. Thank you, Eli. Um, so I provided mostly the same material as was at the last meeting because you guys didn't get a chance to uh, discuss it very much. Um, one of the reasons for that was to try and get Coastal Commission comments on the proposed amendments. Um, I didn't get official written comments, but I did have some email correspondence with the new um, district manager in the Arcata office, who was the um, staff person who who uh, reviewed and, and took the original ordinance through um, certification process. So she's familiar with it. Um, and at this point, she says it looks all pretty minor to her and can probably be processed as a minor amendment, which is a little bit faster, easier process. So that's good news. Um, I'll point out, um, Council Member Davies at the last meeting pointed out a couple of discrepancies in the version of the ordinance um, that was presented at that meeting and the final adopted ordinance. And so I did since then go through line by line and I did find four places where there were differences. There were phrases missing out of the um, ordinance that was in the last packet. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but it's all, um, I added those back in. So it's consistent with the original, the, the final adopted ordinance. And then it shows the um, amendments that were recommended by the planning commission in track changes in there. Um, I did have um, a, a thought since the last um, S, the joint meeting with the STR committee and city council and planning commission. Um, you know, there there does seem to be interest in the community and trying to encourage um, more of the home share and resident type STRs. So resident STRs are. Um, those where the resident lives most of the year in Trinidad, but may leave for part of the year and, and run out um, their house while they're gone. Um, and then a home share STR is um, where someone is, is renting out a room in their house while they are um, on on site um, during the rental. So, um, and and we don't have any of those licenses in town at the moment. So, um, you know, that is clearly, there's not as much demand for those. And I don't know whether that's, you know, from renters or from property owners. Um, but one way to encourage more of those might be to loosen the restrictions on those. So that's just one additional thing to think about. Um, 
and so the resident um, STRs are currently limited to less than 60 days. So that's um, less than two months. So that, that could be broadened. Um, and then the home share STRs is limited to one bedroom and, and that could also be um, broadened and that might um, encourage more of those types of STRs. Um, and then in the rest of the staff report, you saw at the last, I think it was the November meeting, um, provides a little bit of background on the development of the ordinance. Um, for those who weren't around, there was a lot of time and effort and, and public input put into that. So I, I covered a little bit of that. Um, I, I summarized the, the planning commission review of the ordinance, which focused on um, recommendations from, from the STR committee that had been meeting regularly and talking about um, STR issues. Um, I also provided a little bit of information on caps and numbers of STRs over the years. The, the planning commission looked at these numbers and, and some of this information was what, what went into their recommended changes um, on, on the caps. So it provides a little bit of justification and, and reasoning for that. Um, I provided a little bit of background on complaints and enforcement since that's clearly one of the um, primary issues that comes up with the ordinance and whether the enforcement process is, is adequate. Um, as we've talked about, we haven't had official complaints, um, but there might be a couple of reasons for that. Um, hopefully part of that is that the STRs or guests are behaving themselves, but then also the managers are, are responding to um, calls from neighbors quickly and, and dealing with, with the complaints internally. Um, and then there's been a few other issues and suggestions that have come up. And then I also, you know, there's been a lot of um, comments that, um, you know, STRs are the reason that the that the city doesn't have volunteers for the planning commission and and city council. And I think, you know, it's it's a much more complicated issue than that. And if you look at the history of the city's population, STRs, um, you can you can see that. So I provide a little bit of background on that. Um, in terms of the amendments that were made to the ordinance. I'll just quickly go through them. Um, one of the primary ones was a definition of meet and greet. So that's, um, that's where the local contact person has to meet in person with the guests to go over the rules and have them sign the good neighbor contract. And so we've we formalized that with a definition. We also defined property manager so that we don't have to say property manager or owner or local contact person throughout the, the document. Um, property manager includes any and all of those. Oh, and then one additional suggestion from the Coastal Commission staff person was not to use the acronym LCP for local contact person um, because LCP is for the Coastal Commission is so commonly used for local coastal program. Um, so it's already sort of that acronym is taken already. Um, and I would suggest then just spelling it out in the ordinance rather than using an acronym. Um, as we go through um, the ordinance, other changes. So um, the other big change was to add a citywide cap of, of 32 STRs. So in the current ordinance, there is a cap in the two residential zones. There's a cap for the UR zone and a cap in the SR zone and no citywide cap and no caps in other zones. And the idea was to try and encourage STRs in, in the PD and, and, and non-residential, primarily residential neighborhoods. Um, and so we're, we're leaving that in place, no caps in other zones, um, but a citywide cap of, of 32 so that things, you know, not all the PD properties or something become STRs. Um, there is also a slight alteration of reducing the cap in the UR zone by one. Um, that's clearly where the highest demand for STRs is. There's currently a wait list. Um, so there are some licenses available under the um, both the current and the proposed cap. Um, but there is no wait list um, in the SR zone. Um, and we did add one additional STR for the SR zone to balance um, the reduction from the UR zone. 
Um, we also expanded the limitation on the number of licenses that can be held by any one person. So previously, um, it was only in the UR, there was only a limitation within the UR and, and SR zones. Um, and so we've expanded that so that, you know, one person can't just own a bunch of, of STRs in the city. So that's limited to, to two licenses with only one in the residential zones. Um, we also, um, let's see, clarified the, the meet and greet with the definitions of the requirements for that. We also expanded the prohibition on adjacent STRs to all zones. Previously, that was just um, in the UR zone that you couldn't have an adjacent STR. So we expanded that restriction. And then a few changes were made in the enforcement section. So a lot of the STR committee recommendations um, can be implemented administratively, but I did make a few clarifications um, particularly in terms of um, who is responsible for collecting and submitting fines for any violations. So that's really up to the, the property manager. And then, you know, if they, they can take that out of the security deposit or however they want to collect that from the occupants, um, but it's really the property manager needs to be responsible for getting that to the city. Um, I also clarified that um, failure to report um, complaints that are dealt with quickly. So um, a local contact person gets a complaint, they have to respond within 30 minutes and they're supposed to also let the city know um, that that complaint occurred and how it was resolved. Um, but that might not be getting followed through with. So I clarified that, that um, it could be a violation if they don't report those and the city finds out. So. Um, those, that's a summary of the changes um, to the ordinance that were recommended by the Planning Commission. Um, thank you, Trevor. I, I'm just going to, I just have to add this, that um, years ago, Jim Baker and I worked on the original, well, one of the original forms of this, and we spent a, year, a couple of years, we worked hard, it was awful, and we finally got it put together. So I just want to compliment Trevor, because this is amazing how fast and you work on this and get things back to us. So I'm I'm very impressed. So thank you very much. Um, before I go to the council, is um, the city manager have any other comments, or are we ready to go? Yeah, I, I would like to weigh in. Uh, I, I think the recommendation that uh, Trevor threw out there, uh, and I'm not necessarily saying that it was a recommendation, but a uh, a possible approach where she said uh, because of the uh, comments received at the joint meeting with the STR, the council and the planning commission regarding home share. And she also mentioned the resident uh, STRs. Um, those restrictions, which currently have a 60 day limit for resident STRs and a one bedroom limit for home share, I, I believe that we should possibly consider lifting both of those. And, and uh, so that would help encourage uh, resident STRs and home share STRs, where the resident ones wouldn't be limited to 60 days and the uh, home share ones wouldn't be limited to one bedroom. I, I guess we can consider that in, in what we're, uh, what our discussion is. So um, I will open this up to the to the rest of the council. Anyone have questions or want to respond to the city manager's idea? Um, yeah, I do um, encourage those ideas too, but um, I thought that we were going to kind of um, accept it in certain versions and then change it and revote because of uh, public consideration um, to be aware of the changes that we're making or am I, or did I miss part of the presentation? I, I would suggest that if you're going to add changes, you know, I don't think this is set up for a first reading necessarily tonight. Cause I, I figured there would be some discussion on some potential changes. So okay. um, if you want to add or loosen those restrictions, I would say, um, 
I would make those changes and they would be included in the track changes version um, next next month with all with all the recommended changes. Okay, so yeah, okay, I'm on the right page then. Thanks. Cheryl, yes. So, you know, obviously having been on the planning commission and we went through this quite a few times, I'm, I'm okay with the changes that were made by the planning commission. Um, so it makes sense to me. Um, I, I did, we did like the cap. We liked the idea of, um, there was a lot of discussion about balance in the community, um, allowing for, you know, business interests, obviously, uh, that's important. And uh, from an economic standpoint, while at the same time preserving kind of that community look and feel. So that was discussed. Um, I guess I have a question about, so loosening the um, sort of, I guess, restrictions on resident SDR and home share. So are we essentially saying if we, we might end up with uh, more, for example, SDRs in urban residential than we had set aside with the cap? Because I think that that would be, you know, certainly something people would have an opinion about. Yes, so currently in the ordinance, there is a cap of, I believe, six resident STRs in the UR zone, but no caps in other zones and no caps on home share STRs. I think the home share STRs are the um, preferred um, STR because the owner or resident is, is on site while it's being rented, so that really should you know, eliminate parties and noise and, you know, those kind of problems um, that might come along with an STR. Um, so, so there was no cap put on those um, in the ordinance, um, but that could certainly be considered as part of, you know, changing the restrictions on them. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I think at this point, I'm in that camp of it's, it's, um, pretty good the way it is and um i would I, i'm pretty comfortable with it the way it is at this point but that's just my my thought well i will add that uh i, I agree with cheryl it's, um although i i think that's something we need to work on i think we have a number of things that have come up from the information you gave us that i really think is important to look at but i really like to have sometime to go back and consider this and also get get it through back through the planning commission and find out uh, just to look at it more carefully we have we'll be reviewing this in two years and i would like to see there's a number of things that came up throughout this that we'd like to look ahead to um and so i agree that i think and i i i like the idea of some of the ideas i'm not sure i want to add more rooms to a or an SDR, so I'm not sure I can go with that, but I'd like to think about it and have it be presented. Um, I too think this is a great job, and I think, um, uh, but I don't think I'd like to go back and too too much changing right now. I'd like to get that first reading. Um, is there anything else that either or any of the council men or women would like to add? Okay, so let's go to public comment. So please again show yourself. You can put up your hand or let me know. We'll listen to public comment. Anybody? Anybody want to say anything? I, I have a question. I haven't looked at the definition of an STR that you guys have changed. If you changed it, um, was it updated? The definition of an STR was not updated, so it excludes bed and breakfast. All right. Well, if it's a good opportunity to update it, considering the litigation I'm involved with and um, the mis miscalling of my business consistently, um, you know, I would encourage them to use the current California law definition of an STR, which this, which completely keeps hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, and inns separate, and states so. And I think our city. Uh, definition should match the state definition and the county definition. And with that being said, um, I'd be happy to give it to you if you can't find it, but I'm sure you know where it is. All right, thank you. I know it's a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> I don't agree with the cap on any of these. I don't, I don't know what our peak vacation rental housing stock was in the time I've been here, but uh, yeah, I have a very different viewpoint. I think people should be able to do what they want with their property responsibly. 
I love vacation rentals. They're the best properties we have in town as far as maintenance goes and getting problems answered quickly if we need to. Um, I've had many of them around me. I have a couple right now. So there is another opinion here. It doesn't seem to be getting expressed. And um, that's all I have to say for right now. I'll, I'll take a look at it again. And um, I appreciate the work you've done on it, Trevor. And uh, Council Member West, if you're working on it, thank you too. Uh, Trevor, could you just briefly explain, do we have that? Are we working in the same difference with the BNB and the uh, STR first? Is there something different about our policy from others? Um, not that I know of, um, and I'm not sure exactly what state definition um, Mike is referring to. Um, I don't think we've had any issues with our current definition. Um, we could certainly look at um, other definitions. Um, you know, this one has been... It was, I'm sure it was taken from, from somebody else. Um, we might have modified it to some degree, but it does seem to be working. It does, um, it does define a dwelling um, because that was um, a little bit unclear in our current ordinance. And then an STR is defined as a dwelling. So it wouldn't include hotels and, and motels and inns. Um, and then we specifically included, excluded the bed and breakfast or any bed and breakfast um, because those, that would be a dwelling otherwise. So, um, but is not part of the STR ordinance. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure I see a need to change it at this point, but um, you know, like you mentioned, Jack, um, we will be reviewing this again in, in the future periodically. Um, you know, it does say within two years and then as needed after that. So it's not necessarily a two year deadline again, but as you know, we could start reviewing it again tomorrow um, and, and you know, keep a list of, of additional changes because I, um, you know, the longer this waits to get to the Coastal Commission, the longer it'll take to get certified and, and, and that cap be in place. So um, it, it might be good to get get this amendment through and have it be minor and then maybe look at some some additional changes in the future. Thank you. Um, is anybody is anybody in the community want to add any information else? So put your hand up or say something so we know you'd like to speak. I have a general question for you guys, Mike Morgan again. Um, in my research, I've been reading about short term rentals in California and about taxing them in cities and about the overburden some regulations individual cities are placing on them to get their agendas put through. And Trevor, you, probably, you may know about this, but um, I don't have the actual bill that's working its way through our court um, legislature right now, state legislature, SB 555 or something like that. And as I understand it, it's a way for the city to allow the state to collect GOT on the short-term rentals, because they're regulated completely separately from hotels, bed and breakfast, and, and motels. And it kind of takes it away, makes it a little more fair, and it makes it takes a little pressure off the city. So I'll, I'll research that a little bit, but have you heard about that at all, that assembly bill? I have not heard of that. All right, well, I'll get you that information then, and I won't take any more of the council's time at the moment. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, Sherry. Sherry Provolt, please. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, um, Trevor, maybe I don't see it in, I, I um, appreciate you just explaining a little bit. Um, so there's 32 um, licenses that will be allowed. Um, is the home share and the, the other one that was called where it was short, um, the resident STR? Yeah. Are those also the same application process? And do they make up part of the 32 licenses? They do not. So um, right now, home shares are basically, uh, home share STRs are defined in this ordinance and basically regulated as just a home occupation. It doesn't require a, a special license or permit or anything like that. Um, a resident STR would require the same application process, and there is a cap of six of those 
but just in the UR zone, the urban residential zone, the, the denser residential part of town. Okay. And, and that, that cap of six is separate from the cap of 32 for the full-time SDRs. Or, and, and separate from the 18. No, the 18 is included within the 32. The 18, the max of 18 full-time STRs in the UR zone is included in the citywide cap of 32. Right. Yeah, I, I think she means included with the six. Right. So you have 18 in the UR zone, right? That, yes. That, so yes, the six, the six resident STRs is separate from the cap of 18. Okay. So STRs. in the UR zone, you could have 24. Yes, but the six could only currently can only be rented for less than 60 days a year. Right. Yes. Okay. That's, that's what I was trying to wrap my head around. Thank you so much. And again, um, appreciate the work that was done on this. You know, it's complicated. Oh, I think that's all right now. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to make a comment? Um, uh, Aaron, do you want to say something? Yeah. Hey, everybody just wanted to say thanks for everybody's time. Um, Speaking both as a resident and a member of the planning commission, uh, just echoing Cheryl's sentiment that a lot of work's been done on this. And I guess I would just encourage uh, the council tonight to consider moving on this. Uh, we're never going to have a document that's perfect and satisfies everybody. But I think the fact that we've finally reviewed this as a jurisdiction is huge and that we are committed to doing it ongoing in a timely fashion is huge. The short few years I've been in town, this has been a, a constant uh, issue that we haven't gotten to, haven't gotten to, and I'm sure it's a, a load off of everybody else's plate that's been dealing with it far longer than I have. So that's really all I have. Thanks. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Would like, would like... Okay, I haven't I seen have anybody, seen. so I'm going to, um, first of all, thank the Planning Commission and, and uh, the STR committee, and especially Dick Bruce, who put a lot of work into this. So. But if you get a chance, thank them for what they've done. And we're ready to bring it back to our council. And um, if there's no other comments, why don't we have a motion? Um, I'd like to make a motion, but I don't have the packet in front. Uh, if somebody has it open so they can read it, the uh, read it. I can read it. I can read it to you and you can just agree. I guess it says um, I have to accept the short term resident rental uh, ordinance revisions. Okay, yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the short-term rental ordinance revisions um, right now. And we will bring a, bring this back for first reading at the next meeting. With, yeah, under the assumption we will bring it back for the first reading by the next meeting in uh, March. Cheryl, do you want to and make I a second? second that? All right, we've, we've got a... Uh, Motion and a second. Uh, so, uh, Dave, this is up to you now. Thank you. Stand by for just a second. I'm finishing the motion, writing it down. Okay. So, so we have a motion by Council Member Grover, seconded by. Kelly to accept the STR ordinance revisions as presented and bring it back for a first reading in March. And with that, as long as I got that motion correct, we'll start with Council Member Grover. Aye. Kelly? Aye. West? Yes. And Mayor Ladwig is recused. So that is a passing of the ordinance three to zero to one. Thank you. We uh, will move on to the next item, and I think we'll have Mayor Ladwig back again. All right. Thanks, uh, Jack, for taking over. I appreciate that. And discussion, uh, dis presentation, brainstorming session regarding per capita grant projects to improve city park and recreation opportunities. Eli, and I imagine Trevor. And Becky. And Becky. Uh, let me see if she's here. Becky yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah Becky's here. So, uh, 
Yeah, she, she can take it over. This is regarding a per capita grant with dealing with parks. So I'll turn it over to uh, Becky. Thank you. Um, so this uh, grant opportunity has been brought forward to the council several times. And um, we're, the timeline for getting uh, the projects um, accepted by state parks and then completed is getting shorter. So, um, and and this is not, um, this is because state parks had a um, pause of this program. And um, so it just, it became a shorter timeline. But what we would like to do tonight is hear from council and hear from the public possible ideas for this um, grant allocation. So there's a certain amount, um, as it says in this um, agenda item, the report, there's a certain amount of money available. And um, currently there's about 120,000 remaining. The state parks has accepted the first application, which is um, to work on the tennis courts to improve it to add um, pickleball opportunities. And um, so I'm just, uh, unless there's questions, um, I'm just going to say that we're here to listen to um, ideas and um, not all of them will probably be, be eligible or practical or um, logistically um, feasible for this particular grant opportunity, but um, they will all be recorded and um, on our list of possible projects um, for further review. And um, when we have a list coming out of this meeting, um, we can do further homework um, to determine if they're eligible and um, understand what kind of planning uh, and permitting would be necessary and just see if it could fit into the timeline and the different constraints on this. But it's a great opportunity, especially for some smaller projects. And uh, any other input from Eli, Trevor? Okay, not seeing any. Okay, questions for... Uh, Becky, in terms of, I, I imagine, I see in the packet the, you know, the type of project, you know, that must be accessible, um, meet SQL requirements, but not a lengthy uh, SQL process, um, has to be implemented by the end of next year, December 31st, 23, recreational purposes, either acquisition or development and must be accessible with an accessible path of travel to the project. So those are the, those are the concerns that we, or the parameters that, that we need to consider. So um, is that any, go ahead, Becky. So I just wanted to um, briefly um, talk about the accessibility. So um, we have trails in town that could not be considered accessible. We can still improve those um, trails, it, it's, it's, if it's possible to provide accessibility, we need to. Um, so it's kind of within reason. So if we were working on a trail that could not be accessible, um, that wouldn't necessarily mean it wasn't eligible. Okay. And, and I'll just add clarification to that too, that it it has to be an improvement, right, Becky? It can't be maintenance. So correct or a repair. Yeah. So trail repair, unfortunately, doesn't qualify. A trail improvement could. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just clarify that. Okay. It would have to be um, brought to a state that's better than it was um, originally. And so uh, originally, not originally, back in. Um, sometime in the past, I can't remember now, the trails committee recommended that the first flight of steps from the parking lot up the, up the head, that's an improvement, right? That's a, 
that's that would be a possible type of expenditure for this sort of money or no so i think that would be um we could think about how it could be if it's just like simply replacing the stairs that are there i don't know that that would be eligible but if there was some way that we could improve it beyond its original state i think that would be eligible um okay. And Trevor is going to be the one who's going to tell us <laughs> um, the planning um, and permitting needs and what, um, you know, so we'll have to do research. But um, if uh, I'm writing down ideas that I hear, so um, um, I will, yeah, let okay. continue to talk. Yeah. So let's, let's get some, uh, Jack, um, we'll start with you and then just get some ideas thrown out. One of the. One of the things that's come up regularly is what to do about the base of the Axel Linger Trail. And I or would that be something if we were to say we're going to try to make somehow make that a, a trail that will be consist, more consistent in bad weather and hold up there? Would that be a possibility if we were interested in that? I think it would. Um, there's currently, or there, I don't know how long the stairs have been gone, um, but I think think that probably yeah, would I'm not talking be something we could consider. I wouldn't call it, call it a maintenance issue. We no. do have the maintenance issue, but if we were to try to discover a way that if we all worked together and came up with a plan that everybody agreed on, and that might be a possibility. So I would like to consider okay. that. And my okay. other question for Becky is that, um, you know, I've gone through this and I kind of thought there'd be more time. Is this something we can, uh, if we get information, we find something we'd like to do. do we, how do we get it to you or do we just, is this something we can continue to get to later on and not have to do it tonight? Yes, yes, certainly. Um, I, I think, uh, I don't know, I've been sort of trying to encourage um, the council to think about projects for a, a few different um, times you've heard about this, but, um, at our staff meeting, we thought, well, maybe if we have a brainstorming session, um, that would sort of stimulate a conversation about it um, and maybe get people thinking, um, we can propose projects until we've used all our money up. And it could be, you know, like say, uh, at the end of the year, we say, okay, well, we only have one year to actually complete the project. You know, like if it's December next, you know, at the end of this year, um, we would have to co complete the project in an app, uh, a year, but um, certainly we can continue to think about projects. Um, so, so how would the, if the general public found out that they had something in mind but they didn't make it tonight? How would we? What's the best route to get it to you? I would recommend that they um, send the idea to the city clerk, and um, they could um, include me in that uh, or. Um, probably to any one of the council members. Um, I, I think um, as long as people forward it to me to kind of um, uh, uh, do the kind of primary screening of the project, um, you know, and not that they would, if it, just because it doesn't meet the needs of this grant does not mean it's not a valuable project. So they, you know, it's not like we're going to discard a project if it <laughs> doesn't work for this grant. Um, but uh, so I would love to hear all ideas. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hakenen and then uh, Ms. Kelly. Oh, thanks. Um, so I don't know if this would qualify, but you know, I'm on the trails committee. Um, but one of the things we, we have obviously a beautiful trail system, but we lack a co uh, cohesive, consistent signage and yes. mapping system within Trinidad and the greater area. I personally, when we've talked about it, the trails committee, it, it's a big task um, and it needs, in my opinion, professional help to get that accomplished, to partner with all the interested parties because the trails are, you know, on different uh, properties owned by the land trust and, and the different other entities. So I think this would be a great opportunity. It's a good chunk of money. And I, I think that would be, you know, not, more, not just maintenance or repair, but an improvement of the existing thing. So that'd be my mm -hmm. suggestion. Okay. Um, and I actually have spoken with the grant manager about the, to see if a uh, um, comprehensive signage of trails would be an eligible project. And they said as, as long as it's implemented and the signs are put in, it would be. <laughs> 
They, they, they must know As us. opposed to a plan. <laughs> they must know Trinidad. <laughs> Miss Kelly. Um, so that, you know, uh, Mr. Hakenen, uh covered exactly what I was going to say, which was, you know, some so getting some trail signage, maybe with smart tags, you know, that was uh, mm -hmm. brought up um, by, uh, I think, Zach uh, in the trail committee a couple of years ago and um, could be kind of cool. Um, yeah. The idea of a pickleball court, I mean, pickleball is super getting super popular. I think it's a great sport for kids as well. So I love that it's right across from the school. Um, what I want to, I don't know if this could be covered, but maybe is there a way to do sort of like classes or a pickleball lending, you know, library for kids so they can get the equipment, you know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe enhance what we're doing anyway with some of that money, I guess, just brainstorming. I thought that might be nice. Yes, I'll write that's down. That's what I have at the moment. Okay, I will write down the programs. Um, programs are not covered under this oh. opportunity, but there may be other places. Um, I will see if equipment could be an eligible expense. I would think it would be. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, so that the kids could come over and maybe check out some gear and, and mm -hmm. you know, or uh, the non-kids. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Other thoughts, brainstorming ideas? Mr. Madrone. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, everybody else. Um, great <laughs> uh, opportunity. Thank you, Becky, for uh, bringing this forward. Um, you know, the, the trail at the, uh, the bottom of the trail, uh, the Axel Ingram Trail, definitely needs help and i'm glad to hear this particular program would uh, help with that and you know i i've designed a number of treatments there that i've given to your city managers in the past and i'm more than willing to sh share those designs uh with you for submittal in your grant request or your project approval request um, just the basic concept is every winter very large logs float into the beach and get deposited down there near the bottom of the trail. I'm talking, you know, two foot, three foot diameter redwood logs. And those are ideal pieces. They're transitory and they're ideal pieces uh, along with a small amount of rock and other uh, aspects to rebuild the bottom of that trail with something that would stand up to the waves. That was the problem with the previous uh, approach with what's a, called a cable ladder with cable and round uh, fence post, you know, put together with clamps. Uh, those always erode uh, with the uh, high water, storm surge, things like that, uh, versus a reinforced stabilized bank with willow on the sides and using large logs and small rocks and things uh, using the CCCs or some other nice labor force because there's no, currently there's no road access down there. So whatever you do, you have to get the materials to the site. And that's a big part of why nothing's ever been done. At any rate, short form, happy to work with you. Uh, your planners and others provide those designs uh, to get that done. And over on the Trinidad Head Trail, I actually built that piece too. Many of you know I've been involved in building a lot of the trails around uh, Trinidad. And that one uh, does need a rebuild. It's been some 20, 25 years since we built what's there and things wear out. And you could add to it little pullouts with little benches to increase the, the view, uh, you know, opportunities for people walking up the trail. It provides a place to step off the trail, uh, you know, while you're waiting for other people to pass. Uh, so those are ways to improve what you have there that also would probably qualify. Very easy, simple designs. Uh, anyway, good on you guys for trying to not only maintain but improve these wonderful assets we have in town. Let me know how I can help. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Other uh, other ideas? And just to remind folks, uh, if you do have an idea or if you run across someone who does uh, want to share their thoughts, uh, please email city clerk um, and our city clerk and uh, or a counselor or stop in let us know what your thoughts are and, uh, me, go ahead david 
Yeah, yeah I was just going to make a suggestion like that, too. When the, when we accumulate some ideas, maybe hold a special meeting, um, and then we can decide which ones are viable to be implemented. And I think uh, what Becky's asking for is that we get enough of those ideas so she can vet them, and then we can, right? And then we can mm -hmm. kind of have a, like, these are the ones who, these are the ideas that are eligible, right? Mm -hmm. So keep those ideas coming. But uh, mm -hmm. Becky, you wanted to say something? Yes, um, I just wanted to throw out another idea um, that may stimulate some more um, thoughts. Um, and I believe this was uh, mentioned by another staff member that, um, uh, bicycle um, parking um, facilities uh, or lockers to accommodate um, bicyclists who come to town um, could be the type of project that would be fairly simple um, and quick. Um, I mean, relatively speaking. Um, and so if this can, you know, maybe prompt some other thoughts about um, walking, bicycling, um, other types of recreation. Very good. How and about one last call for ideas and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. Go ahead, Eli. Yeah, I wanted to mention one idea that I had brought forward before and uh, in the fact that it uh, may take too much time and may not be done in, uh, in time because of CEQA uh, would be the Vista points. So we had talked about Vista points as part of the Caltrans project. And since that Caltrans project was turned down, I thought, uh, I know I had gotten very good buy-in uh, from uh, the uh, Chirai Ancestral Society. Uh, they thought it was a great idea to have uh, a couple Vista points. So you know, uh, where people can enjoy the beauty of the bay. And uh, so that might be an option that um, could be considered for other similar grants if timing doesn't work for this one, which is, that's my understanding. All right, thank you. All right, last call for uh, some ideas. All right, thank you for the discussion and uh, thank you, Becky, for keeping this on our radar. Appreciate it. Uh, our next item is discussion decision regarding first reading of ordinance 2022-01, our first ordinance of the year, amending the requirements for election of the chair of the planning commission. Trevor, I imagine you would like to brief us on this. Yeah, I'm... Uh... I'm going to scroll through the grant guidelines here to get to my staff report. It wasn't a very long staff report, though. Maybe I don't need it. So you may recall um, last year is about a year ago. Um, the Planning Commission made a recommendation to the City Council to amend, um, let's see, Section uh, 2.20.070 of the Municipal Code that deals with election of the Chair of the Planning Commission. Um, it requires that you, that someone can't be chair twice, basically, unless everybody has had a turn. And, um, you know, we, we have struggled at times over the years with a, a lack of a full planning commission and turnover on the planning commission so that we, we mostly have new members. And so that section then requires someone who's relatively new and maybe uncomfortable in that position to be elected as, as chair rather than someone who has experience um, <clears throat> in that position. And I don't really... I'm not quite sure the reasoning of it. It's it's nice to have some turnover and give everybody a chance, but I, I'm not sure I see the advantage of it. There's not a similar requirement for the mayor or anything like that. Um, so the Planning Commission made that recommendation. We brought it to the City Council. The City Council concurred and, and directed staff to bring an amendment back uh, for City Council approval. I believe we were talking about maybe water lines at the time. And so that, that 
bringing that back, that amendment got overlooked, um, but now here we're in the position of losing our planning commission chair um, and having to elect a new chair. So we're in this position again, so it came up again. And so um, I have proposed an amendment to remove that, that language that you can't be chair twice. Um, and I made it uh, similar to election of a mayor where it can be, where they can also be removed by election of the planning commission. Um, and so it's a pretty simple amendment. And oh, the track changes, oh, the track changes version unfortunately does not show the language that was removed. Um, that's kind of a product of, of converting Word documents to PDF, unfortunately. Um, we can, I can pull it up real quick just to read you the language that's being deleted. The version I see in the packet, Trevor, does have deleted on a rotating basis so that no individual may serve a second oh, term. Oh, okay, oh, okay, I didn't even read the note. Oh, yes, okay, no, that, yeah, no, that works. <laughs> that's in there, thank you. Okay, I just, I was like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I see what you're talking about, but thank yes. you for confirming. Yes, thank you. So basically, the chair of the planning commission shall be elected to a two-year term unless removed by a majority vote of the commission. Yep. Okay. And at this point, the recommended action is to receive the first... Re this kind of stuff, I always have to check on procedure. What we're doing is we're accepting the first reading, if, if that's what you're asking us to do. Yes. Okay. I just want to. Okay. So, any questions, comments for uh, Trevor regarding this agenda item? Any comment from the public regarding this agenda item? All right. Yes, I have one. Mike Morgan. Go ahead. As a former councilman chairman, I agree with Trevor. There shouldn't be any one term, two term stuff. Um, I think that it should be encouraged to be transferred amongst the people. It's really good to give experience to someone after they've had a few years on, on, the, count, on the planning commission or the council. And Eureka, I know they, they just rotate the mayorship, and I've always thought that was a really good way to do it so that it's not based on some majority in control. So I, I'm glad to see they're addressing it. Um, sorry we lost our council member, but it looks like our we got a good counselor. We lost our chairman, and um, I look forward to working with Kelly, Councilman Kelly, and I hope we can find a council uh, chairman for the planning commission and some more planning commissioners. All right, thank you much. Uh, any other comments regarding this agenda item? All right, hearing and seeing none. Um, do we have a motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 2022-01? I will move that I'll, we conduct this Ordinance 2022-01 for the first reading, um, amending the requirements for election of the Chair of the Planning Commission. Then in that case, I will second that. <laughs> we have a first from West and a second from Kelly. Mr. Adams. Yes, Mr. Mayor. So we've got uh, we'll we'll do this by the book. We'll uh, uh, we've got a first by Councilmember West, second by Councilmember Kelly to waive the full reading of Ordinance twenty twenty two dash zero one and read by title only, which states. An ordinance of the city of Trinidad amending section 2.20.070 of title two of the Trinidad Municipal Code relating to the election of the planning commission chair. And we will read the first, we'll have the first reading and start with council member West. Yes. Kelly. Aye. Grover. I know you wanna say yes. There he is. There he is. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Mayor Ladwig. Yes, please. Okay, we have a uh, pass unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, folks, our last agenda item for this evening is to discuss and decide regarding appointment to fill the vacant resident 
member to the Trinidad Trails Advisory Committee. We have two letters of interest. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right place. We have a letter of interest from, so we have a resignation that we accepted last meeting from Gail. Now we have a letter of interest from Anita Thompson at, um, and sorry, and from Karen Manaxis. I, and I'm, I hope I got that name correct. Um, we have, uh, I see Karen here. I do not see Anita at this point. So at this point, council, I would like to get your direction. Um, we chose uh, for the city council position to table it until both members were available for input. Um, what say you for this item since we have one of two folks who submitted a letter um, present? Yeah, I, I concur. Then we'll just do it all at once at our special meeting. Is that way you're driving it. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm asking for direction to be consistent with the, the action that we took on the council. Do we want to do that with this uh, appointment of someone to the trails committee? Uh, I, I should, so are you looking for a motion to table it till we do our special meeting? Yeah, I'm just looking for direction to make sure that we're... <laughs> we're the direction I'm sending you. <laughs> I, Jack has a comment, and then I, I may be about to say the same thing. So go ahead, Jack. <laughs> we have a trails committee meeting coming up yeah. right away. You know, I would like to see if we could fill that immediately. I have no problem with um, making a choice in the, right mm -hmm. now. So Cheryl, I'll let you go. I, I, I think that's what I was going to say. And and I um, I have the benefit of uh, having reached out to both Anita and Karen, thinking that we had two uh, positions available. So uh, both of them were, were willing to put their hat. Uh, they're both would be wonderful choices. Uh, they were both willing to put their names in the hat. And it was uh, my, mis my error that there's only one position, and I reached out to two people. Um, it's an unusual situation for us to have, um, and so I'm thrilled that we have both of them interested in this in this room. So I don't know whether we have an option. Uh, you know, I know changing the resolution to make more citizens uh, to say that we would have three general representatives would be probably too complicated. Maybe we have one of them as a, um, you know, I don't know, Jack. Maybe you have an idea. As a, well, I, I do have an idea. Um, I. We have two people who I, I think would be great to be on the committee, but we have an open meeting. So we're going to pick one. And the other one um, is absolutely open. Come, we're free to come in and, and uh, come to our meetings and be part of, you know, at least part of the whole process. So we can get in, you can get in there and give some ideas. And I, I appreciate Cheryl for being an over recruiter. I think that's, that's great that she's out there trying. So that's nice. Um, so um Mayor Ladwig, can I make a suggestion as to who to choose at this point, or you want to keep it, let everybody talk first? I'm yes. just looking for for direction from the council to see uh, how we want to proceed. Uh, it sounds like we we have a, a majority of two. I haven't weighed in um, a majority of two who want to continue with the process. So I'm I'm happy either way. Um, I mean, this is such an unusual problem to have um, that I'm just really on familiar territory. So at this point, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, since Karen is here, um, if, if she wants to um, just share a little bit about her interest in joining the Trails Committee. Uh, we do have in our packet uh, communications from both, uh, Anita and from Karen. But Karen, uh, in essence, this is my way of dealing with the guilt of making you stick to a meeting for hours and hours and hours. And uh, so I wanna give you the chance to, to speak. So please please share your, your comments. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm happy to be here. And um, I am a resident of Trinidad, of course, and I use the trails very regularly for recreation and uh, also just commute. I actually, it's my only way to, other than walking on scenic or riding my bike on scenic, my only way to get from my home into the town and into the school is using the trails. And it's, it's important to me that they're welcoming to the community as a whole and um, uh, accessible and uh, um, are functioning as they're supposed to. And uh, 
there, we live in a beautiful area and I feel like the public should have access to it. My kids all attend, I have three children, they all attend Trinidad school and we use the trails to get to school, for example. So we use the trails to get to the store. And so that's my, that's why I'm interested in Great. Thank participating you very much. in the process. Thank you. Thank you very much. So at this point, um, let's, let's uh, maybe bring some public comment in regarding the two folks. Uh, if anyone has any public comment on the trails committee, the appointment of either Karen or Anita to the trails committee. All right, seeing none, bring it back to the council for uh, recommended action. Well, I'm willing to start. Uh, I appreciate Karen being here. Um, I sort of made up my mind when I came in here that the, the idea was going to be simple is that it looked like Anita had put her name in there quite a bit before Karen. So I was just going to say simply, let's, let's bring Anita aboard. But the other problem is that Karen's here and Anita's not. So um, <laughs> I would still probably nominate Anita just because she's, I think she got her name in first and it's not anything else. I don't know who would be better or anything, just who had the name in there first. So I'll start with that and let the other members help help me out. All right, so I, uh, I would choose either because I think they're both fabulous. And, um, and I know Anita wanted to join the meeting tonight. She may do, maybe something came up. Um, so I guess I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as Jack. I would love to have both of them, but I'm gonna go with the person who put their name in first and um, and I owe Karen a big glass of whatever beverage she would like to enjoy. <laughs> David? Uh, yep, you're up, Dave. Well, my, my um Peter wouldn't unmute for a moment, so now I'm with you. So uh, I'm probably in the, the camp, too. Um, I believe that I'm sure they're both very qualified, but I do already know Anita, too. So not to, you know, conflict and make this some some big thing, I'm, I'm going to say her, too, then that way, that way we'll move on with this. And I would definitely encourage Karen to participate in the meetings because you, your, vote, your voice will definitely be heard. They're not big meetings, so. Everybody gets a chance to speak what they want and exchange ideas and stuff. So that's my view from this point, anyways. All right. So I'm hearing uh, I'm hearing the makings of a motion. I'll move to uh, accept Anita Thompson to the Trails Committee. I'll second that. All right, we have a first and we have a second. Uh, Mr. Adams, would you mind uh, reading a roll call vote? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. So we've got a motion from Council Member West uh, seconded by Grover to appoint Anita Thompson to fill the resident position on the uh, Trinidad Trails Advisory Committee, starting with Council Member West. Yes. Grover. Yes. Kelly. Yes. And Mayor Ladwig. I'm going to abstain simply because of uh, not having both folks here, but uh, appreciate the input all the same. And, and I'd like to just add that to Karen, it'd be nice, really nice to have you come to the meetings, especially having bringing kids to the uh, on those trails. I think it'd be a big, real asset. So please do. We're, you're very welcome to come in and we'll make sure you get a chance to talk to us. Yeah, and I, I offered Karen the opportunity to join some of the, the short-term rental, the <laughs> planning commission and city council as well. <laughs> so it's good for I think she'd make then. a great right. addition to any of those. Yeah. So go yeah, on, come on. <laughs> yeah, I thought that I thought that was implicit in the city code that if we didn't select you for the trails committee, you automatically yeah. were the chair of the planning commission. I thought that if we could <laughs> check the code. That makes then, total sense. Yeah. <laughs> So Karen, do I do appreciate your participation this evening. Um, and with that, I will uh, end the discussion decision items and call for future agenda items. Um, do we have uh, future agenda items that folks haven't already heard us mention this evening that we are gonna put on, on our future meetings? Again, we have a second meeting in 
February the 22nd, um, where we hope to consider a uh, council appointment and um, what was the other thing that we needed to add to that meeting? I'm drawing a blank right now. Eli, can you help me out? Uh, yeah, I, I could. And I know I you have, have the notes, Eli. I know you yeah, have the notes. If it wasn't so late. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can keep talking, and I'll uh, try to remember it. Uh, <laughs> I, I can actually help Mayor it's Mike yes. Morgan. I have a suggestion, and Eli's well aware of it, and so is Wes, and I believe you are too. Um, it's regarding the recent passing of an increase to our transit occupancy tax, otherwise known as a hotel tax, which is apparently unconstitutional. I've asked them to put that on for discussion and action. I'm not sure what we should do. I have a couple of suggestions. Uh, I think other people would like to hear about this. I first brought this up, I believe in December, but I have a January 19th, 2022 letter here about it saying, attention, honorable city council and staff. We received your letter indicating an increase in the transit occupancy tax, TOT. What we didn't receive is any reason, justification or stated authority for apparently arbitrarily increasing the city of Trinidad TOT rate a full 2%. Please provide such. And I attach the Constitution of the State of California, Article XIII, 13, C, Section 1, Section 3, that explains that you may not increase tax unless and until that tax is submitted to the electorate. A general tax must be submitted to the electorate and approved by a majority vote. That seems to apply. There's more. And uh, I also asked about the initiative process to repeal it. So I know Gabe has been working on this. Um, I've been working on it. Eli's been working on it. But I'd like to see us talk about it uh, in the public and address it at the next meeting. All righty. Paula, I see your hand is up. You're off mute, so you can begin. There you are. Um, not to perseverate on this, but I will follow up with Eli about what's happening with the feasibility study that PWA is doing, as well as GHD apparently is working with them. Um, but I'd like, like there to be an op open public forum um, to notify the public of the details. Uh, because the bottom line is, the, the, correct me if, if I'm, I'm mistaken on this, that the city will not be eligible for grants for developing the Luffenholz watershed until this feasibility study is nailed down. Um, so there is, there's a time crunch on it. In the meantime, it's costing X thousands of dollars every month and I may be misreading the um, <clears throat> financial um, information, but it seemed like it was well over $30,000 that we were paying in contracted services. And I'm assuming it's for these engineering services. Well, I will follow up on all of this, but I, I would like a report given to the public, and I'd even offer to do the report after following up with Eli, or Eli and I can do it, whomever. But I, I'd like there to be a monthly uh, public notification on, on the prog progress of this project. All right. Other future agenda items? All right, as always, if you think of other things that the city um, needs to bring to these council meetings, please let us know. Otherwise, thank you very much for your participation this evening, and I wish you a good evening. Thanks, everyone.